On day one, I spawned into the amaranth fields as a golden gorilla. Now it looks like I'm a gorillionaire. Well, a baby gorillionaire anyway. But I bet with my hard work, I can get bigger, stronger, and even shinier. My golden gorilla voice was a little too loud though because it attracted the attention of someone who wasn't so nice. A strange green man in a crown emerged. Wee hee hee, tis me, the great and glorious Goblin King. All will bow to my excellence. Oh, uh, hi, Goblin King, uh, your highness. I'm Zozo, the golden gorilla. No, 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 this simply won't do. You're too shiny. Nobody should be shinier than my crown. I can't help how shiny I am, your highness, and I promise that I didn't mean to offend you. I don't care what you mean. I'm the Goblin King, and what I want, I get. And you're gonna be a lot less shiny once my fully sick boys have beaten you senseless and buried you beneath the earth! Suddenly, some ogres emerged and started stomping towards me. All I could do was run for my life and get out of there, but I could still hear the Goblin King's shrill voice behind me. You can run, but you can't hide! We'll never give up, Sozo! Never! I kept running until I couldn't hear him anymore. Guess I'm gonna need to topple the Goblin King if I want to get any peace around here. On day two, I started exploring more of the amaranth fields. It's pretty nice out here, but I guess looks can be deceiving if the Goblin King and his ogres are running around here. And I've only got 10 hearts. I'd better find something to eat, and fast! Luckily, I stumbled on an apple tree. I used all of my baby gorilla strength to shake the apples down from the tree and gobble them up. Mmm, that really hit the spot. I love apples. Good choice for your last meal then. <laughs> Get it? Because you're dead meat, shiny boy. I turned around and saw the Goblin King's ogres charging toward me. Uh-oh, I don't think I'm ready for a fight, but I guess I don't have a choice. They attacked me, and I tried my best to fight back, but they were way too tough for me, and there were so many of them. It's only my second day. It can't already be over for me. No! Hang on, little gorilla. I've got this. A gobber jumped into the fray, fighting off the ogres long enough for me to get away from them. Follow me. Let's get you out of here before more of these jokers show up. By the way, my name's Greg. I'm Zozo. On day three, I followed the friendly gobber to his campfire. Thank you for saving me. Don't sweat it, kid. Any enemy of the Goblin King is a friend of mine. He hates me just because I'm shiny and golden. Don't take it personally. That attention hog can't stand it if anyone else is special. That's why so many of us are trying to overthrow him. Everyone deserves to shine, not just that so-called king. Here, I got someone you should meet. The gobbler introduced me to a goblo sitting near the fire. I told the goblo that I was the Goblin King's latest target. Tough luck, Zozo. Sorry to hear that. But you're in the right place if you want to end the Goblin King's regime. We've been working on it for quite some time, and I get the feeling you'll be a great help. You'll need to get a lot stronger first, though. Think you can do that? Yes, I do! That's what I like to hear. First things first, you're gonna need a base. Get to work building one. I'll send Greg along to help you out. Thank you so much! Don't ever let them dull your shine, Zozo. From day four to day five, I got to work building a base. Before I can build anything, I'll need some wood and some tools. I gathered enough wood to craft a wood pickaxe, then use that pickaxe to gather some stone. Now I can use this to make a full set of tools. I'd better hurry up so I can build my base before it gets dark. I crafted a set of stone tools, and then it was finally time to build my base. A room for me and a room for Greg. There, looks pretty good. It's small, but I'll have time to build more later. Greg, come check out our new home. Sweet digs, kid. I like it. Great place to hang my hat for a little while. But you're not wearing a hat. Well, if I get a hat, I'll have a place to hang it. Hey, kid, look out behind you. I turned around and was jumped by a garch. This time, though, I had a sword to defend myself. I fought back and managed to defeat the nasty creature. Hey, I did it. Oh, I feel kind of funny. Suddenly, I grew bigger and I felt my heart's increase to 30. Awesome! I yelled with excitement and a blast of fire came out of my mouth. Careful with that fire breath, buddy. Don't burn the house down. Sorry. From day six to day eight, I took my new set of tools, improved strength, and super cool fire breath, and went out exploring. I traveled to the jungle, where I spotted a poor, innocent little Kato being attacked by a Shadoneer. Hey, cut that out! 
the Shadoneer didn't listen, so I had to make him listen with a blast of fire breath. He got pretty angry about being burned, but I had my sword ready to go, and we battled it out. The Shadoneer was tough, but I was tougher, and I managed to win the fight. You're safe now, little Kato. Thank you. I've never met a hero like you before, but I'm afraid I'm still not safe. I was trying to run away from a bigger, badder monster when that shadow near attacked me. See, my house was invaded by a reaver. He kicked me out and said if I tried to come back, he'd kill me. Could you help me get my home back? That's terrible. Of course I'll help. From day nine to day 10, I followed the little Kato to his house. And sure enough, there was a huge, scary looking reaver standing guard outside. Hey, I told you to clear out of here. Maybe you didn't learn your lesson last time. Do I need to tell you again with more pain? The only one who's gonna get hurt around here is you. What? You're here to fight me? Ha, <laughs> you're tiny, like a little gold statue of a gorilla. You don't scare me. Well, maybe this will. I opened my mouth and shot a blast of fire breath at the reaver, but he didn't even flinch. Ah, oh, thanks. I was getting kinda chilly. Now it's my turn. Uh-oh. He launched himself at me, knocking me back. He was way too strong. I don't think I'm ready for this fight. I'm so sorry, little Kato. We've gotta run. But I promise I'll come back and finish the job once I'm strong enough. I ran away as fast as I could. The little Kato right by my side. Until we get your house back, you can come stay at my base with me. From day 11 to day 12, I escorted the little Kato back to my base. I'll need to build another room, so he has somewhere to sleep. I got to work, and before long, I had added on a room for my new guest. Here you go. I hope you're comfortable here. Thank you so much. I wanted to give you something in return for letting me stay here, but I didn't have anything with me. So I hope you don't mind, but I added something to your base. Come take a look. He showed me a brand new storage hut. I figured you could keep things in here. Uh, weapons, I guess, or whatever you want. It's great. Thank you. Now you get some rest. I've got more work to do. Wait, before I do, are you the golden gorilla that the Goblin King is trying to get rid of? I sure am. Oh, I'm so sick of that Goblin King. He wasn't always in charge, you know. He came here a little while ago with an army of ogres and scared everyone into listening to him. No one even knows where he came from or if he's a real king at all. No wonder he's so worried about being outshined. Thanks for the info, little Kato. My name is Lyle, just by the way. I'm Zozo. Nice to meet you. Lyle went off to take a nap and I headed into a nearby cavern to do some mining. I gathered some iron ore, perfect for upgrading my gear. I used a furnace to smelt the ore into iron ingots and crafted an iron pickaxe and an iron sword. I still feel like the base is missing something. As I was brainstorming, I spotted a herd of sheep grazing nearby. Hey, sheep, why don't you come live with me? I built them a sheep farm to live in and herded them inside. Not too bad, if I do say so myself. From day 13 to day 15, I was trying to come up with ideas on how to grow stronger. I decided to talk to Greg and get some advice. Hey Greg, I'm running out of time to get strong enough to defeat the Goblin King. What can I do? Well kid, when I want to get stronger, I get out of my comfort zone. Try going somewhere new, maybe find some new enemies. You'll never grow just staying in the same place all the time. Great idea, I'll go back to the jungle. That was a pretty intense place. I traveled back to the jungle and started exploring the unfamiliar terrain. While I was walking, I spotted some familiar faces, the ogres. They were too strong for me before, but I think I'm ready to try again. Hey, remember me? Hey, look, it's the golden gorilla. Let's get them, boys. I opened my mouth and shot fire breath at them, engulfing them in flames. Ouch! Where'd you learn to do that? I didn't answer the question. I just drew my iron sword and attacked again. This time, they were the ones who weren't prepared. And one by one, I defeated them all. I did it, I did it. Hey, what's this? There was a health potion on the ground. They must have dropped this. Well, finders keepers. I drank the health potion and right away, my hearts increased to 60. Woohoo! I was doing a victory dance when I accidentally shot a fireball. Hey, that's new. I'm on fire here. From day 16 to day 19, I followed Greg's advice and kept exploring. My journey took me all the way to the desert. It sure is hot out here. I wish I had a nice shady tree to sit under. Oh, and some coconuts. But instead of coconuts, I found a book. The book of information. Information about what? 
I guess I'll see. It says, the Goblin King was once a lonely little goblin underling, the lowest of the low. One day, he had enough of being bossed around. He snuck up on the leader of his kingdom, destroyed him with a sneak attack, and stole his crown. Now, he lives in fear of being seen as the fraud that he is, and having someone take his place. Wow, I'd feel bad for him if he wasn't trying to kill me. Get that gorilla! I was suddenly ambushed by more of the Goblin King's ogres. But with my new fireball attack, they didn't stand a chance. I burnt them all to a crisp and vanquished them. Hey, I'm getting pretty good at this whole fighting thing. From day 20 to day 22, I traveled back home to my base. Time to go back into the mines and see if I can upgrade my gear some more. I entered the mine and quickly found some iron ore. After I smelted it into ingots, I was able to craft an iron chest plate. With my new attack, my new strength, and this armor, I think I can finally fight that reaver. So I traveled back to Lyle's house where that nasty reaver was still stomping around like he owned the place. Back for more. Can't get enough of the taste of the feet. You can't just take people's houses. I'm going to show you what happens when you do. I hit him with a fireball, and this time it worked. It knocked him back. While he was recovering, I got my sword and rushed at the reaver, swinging my blade as hard as I could. He attacked me, but I came back at him even harder. A couple of hits later, he was down. Wee hee hee! Well, look at that! You're getting stronger, I see! It was the Goblin King! He was watching me from behind a nearby tree! I'll have to send stronger minions to get rid of you, it seems! No matter! I will! I always get what I want, you know! Only because you sneak up on people! You'll never win in a fair fight! Well, we'll have to see about that, won't we? I have grand plans for your demise, Zozo! Such grand plans! Wee hee hee hee! And with that, he disappeared. From day 23 to day 26, I ran back to my base as fast as I could. My encounter with the Goblin King had shaken me up a little bit, but I was still excited to give Lyle the good news about his house. Lyle, Lyle, guess what? The Reaver is finally gone. Really? That's amazing, but... Oh no, what is it? It's just, uh, I've been having so much fun staying here with you guys. Do you think I could keep living here instead? Sure, stay as long as you want. With that settled, I ventured back into the mines to look for some more iron ore. After I found enough, I smelted it into ingots and crafted a new iron helmet and a pair of shiny iron boots. While I was trying on my new armor, Lyle came to see me. Hey, Zozo. As a thanks for everything, I built a perimeter wall around the base to help keep us safe. So nothing like the reaver attack ever happens here. I went outside and checked it out. That's amazing. I feel safer already. From day 27 to day 31, I headed back out to the desert to continue exploring in the harsh climate. I was kicking around the sand, getting lost in my thoughts, when I saw something. A silver lobo sat under a palm tree. Hey, you're the gold guy who beat up all those ogres. I sure am. Well, that was super neat of you. If you're still in a heroic mood, I could use some help. Any chance you have a place I could stay for a while? The Goblin King doesn't like how, uh... How silver I am. And I'm scared he'll send more ogres after me. He's doing the same thing to me for being gold. I'd be happy to help. Follow me back to my base. You can stay there. The silver lobo and I headed back to my base. And when we got there, I'd take a second to shear my sheep and gather some wool. Hey, this gives me an idea. I decided to hang some decorative banners on my base just to spice up the place. These really class up the place. Sweet banners, kid. But sorry to interrupt. Goblo needs our help. Who? Goblo the Goblo, you met him when I saved you. Now it's your turn to help me save him. Quick, let's go. From day 32 to day 35, Greg and I traveled back to the Goblo's campfire to see what was going on. When we got there, a whole horde of ogres was making a mess of the place. Goblo was way outnumbered. Goblo, we're here to help. Oh, how sweet. Baby Gorilla thinks he can save his friend. Well, you're too late, loser. I shot a fireball at them, destroying them in one hit. But when Greg and I rushed over to check on Goblo, he was already halfway gone. Thank you for coming, boys. But I'm afraid they were too much for me. I, I don't have a lot of time left, Zozo. You can finish what I couldn't. Defeat the rest of the ogres. I will. And just like that, Goblo was gone. From day 36 to day 39, I didn't want to go home after losing Goblo. I needed to get my mind off of things. So instead, I traveled to the jungle to look for some bad guys to fight or someone to help. I just need something useful to do. Are you talking to me? 
there was a rouge tomato suddenly staring at me. No, I was talking to myself. Ah, uh, well, could you be talking to me? If you're trying to be useful, I need some help. Sure, what's going on? Well, I need help taking on a rattlesnake near here. He's really messing up the neighborhood, kicking everybody out. I need some muscle to get him to lay off. You got it. It didn't take me long to find the rattlesnake. He was hissing and pacing back and forth, looking for trouble. Well, he found it, and trouble was me. I took him out with a few quick fireballs and a finishing move with my sword. Your rattlesnake problem is all taken care of. Thanks, you're a swell guy. Not like that freak in the crown who came through here earlier. The Goblin King? Yeah, that's him. Said he's trying to recruit new goons to help him get rid of some gold monkey or something. Sounds like a bad scene. And seems like the kind of guy who doesn't ever fight his own fights, but still wants to act like a tough guy. If you're not a fighter, just admit it to yourself. That's what I did, and it worked out. Yup, thanks for the info. Yeah, hey, forget about it. From day 40 to day 43, I left the friendly, but kinda weird, rouge tomato behind and walked back to my base. When I got there, Greg was waiting for me and he looked excited about something. Hey kid, I thought we could both use some cheering up. So I added some couches to the base for hanging out. And I was thinking, maybe we could invite some more friends to stay here with us. Absolutely, the more the merrier. Great, my other gobble friend should be here soon. A little while later, Greg's friend arrived and settled in. Nice to meet ya. After a while, the silver lobo I helped out before came to find me. You've already done so much for me, but could I ask for one more favor? I left my favorite book behind and I can't go back and get it without being attacked by some really scary monsters. Could you go look for it for me? I'll do my best to get your book back. We can put it on one of those shelves when I do. From day 44 to day 49, I trudged out to the desert to look for the Silver Lobo's book. I don't see any books, I just see a ton of sand. I don't like sand at all. It's so coarse and rough and it gets everywhere. As I was digging through the sand looking for the book, the Goblin King ran up from behind me. Wee hee hee! Tremble in fear! It's me! I'm not scared of you. Oh, but you should be! You think I'll only stop with your demise? No, 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 silly Zozo! I'm going to get rid of everything shiny in this land! Every living thing that is silver, gold, diamond, that glitters and shimmers brightly! My crown will be the only shiny thing left! And then no one will doubt my authority as king! Or you could try being a kind and just ruler? Ugh, are you kidding me? That sounds terrible! Sorry, Zozo, but I have to run! Bear with me! What? Sorry, I misspoke! I am a bear with me! Enjoy fighting my bear! The Goblin King ran off, and a massive, hulking grizzly bear ran in! From day 50 to day 53, I faced off against the Goblin King's mighty grizzly bear! The grizzly bear charged at me! I fought back with a fireball and jumped out of the way before he could scratch me with his claws! But the bear was tough, and he came at me again! This is my hardest fight yet! It was difficult, and the bear was much bigger and stronger than me, but I was better at dodging! And I had fire powers that most bears don't have! And all of that helped me win in the end! Phew! That was a close one! I'm glad I made it! Ooh, sparkly! The grizzly bear dropped a diamond on the ground during the fight! I should take it with me! I bet I'll need it later! From day 54 to day 57, I continued my search for this Silver Lobo's book. She said there were scary monsters involved, but I haven't seen anything but sand and that bear, but that wasn't normal for this place, I'm pretty sure. Finally, I happened upon a specter. I don't think it's that scary, but I bet that's what she's talking about. Hey, did you take someone's book? The specter didn't answer me. It just started attacking. Well, I guess that's your answer, fireball. I blasted the specter with a fireball and I totally vaporized it. Sure enough, it dropped the book. What's this book about anyway? Seems like a lot of trouble for one little book. Oh, it says my diary on it. No wonder she wanted it back. I ran back to my base and delivered the book to the Silver Lobo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're the nicest golden gorilla I've ever met. Not that I've met any others. There used to be more of you, I've heard, and other gold creatures. But the Goblin King has been getting rid of them ever since he took the throne. It's just terrible. Well, I can't let him get away with it anymore. From day 58 to day 62, I expanded my sheep pen to make room for even more sheep. There, now you guys can spread out a bit more and have some room to roam. 
They didn't say anything back, but I think they were happy about it. Next, I returned to the mines. The diamond the bear dropped got me thinking. I want to craft some diamond gear. I gathered some diamonds and used them, along with the diamond the bear dropped to craft a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. Now I'm even shinier than ever. Take that, Goblin King. When I climbed back out of the mines and went back to my base, Greg was waiting for me. Welcome back, kid. Since we've got more folks staying with us now, I took the liberty of letting them invite even more friends over. Hopefully you don't mind. Of course I don't mind. You know what I say, the more the merrier. From day 63 to day 66, I tried to decide where to go next. I need to keep getting stronger so I can stop the Goblin King from carrying out his evil plans. But what should I do next? Sozo, I just got a letter from my friend in the lush tundra. She said that there is some kind of dangerous creature out there making trouble, and it might be working for the Goblin King. If you play your cards right, you could get fighting experience and some information, all at the same time. Wow, that's like getting two things with only one thing. Awesome. I traveled to the lush tundra, and a huge warped toad leapt into my path. Uh-oh, this must be the creature making trouble. I got my sword ready and was taking a deep breath to unleash some fire on the toad when she spoke. Wait, no! I'm Alex, Lyle's friend. I'm the one who asked for your help. You're Zozo, right? Oh, sorry, my mistake. So if you're not the one I'm here to fight, who is? From day 67 to day 70, Alex, the warped toad, led me to the danger she had told me about, a warped Moscow hovering menacingly above the ground. There it is. Think you can help? I sure do. Time to squash that bug. Be careful. That's one mean Moscow. I listened to Alex's warning, and I approached the warped Moscow slowly. But as soon as it saw me, it started buzzing aggressively and swooped at me. I had to dodge and counter with a fireball. The warped Moscow couldn't get away in time, and the fireball hit it, knocking it down. I took my chance to finish it off right then and there. I did it. Your Moscow troubles are over, Alex. Thank you so much. Lyle wasn't kidding. You really are a hero. I'm just trying my best. I only hope I'm going to be enough of a hero to take on the Goblin King. From day 71 to day 74, I decided to explore the lush tundra a bit more. I already came all the way out here. I might as well get a good look. As I was exploring, I spotted a sign that spelled out Z-O-Z. I didn't know what that means, but it's almost my name. That reminds me, if you want to see more Zozo videos, you can find them by searching Z-O-Z-O. I arrived in a new part of the lush tundra and saw a chest there. Oh, I wonder what's inside. When I opened it, there was nothing in there. Oh, that's disappointing. Wee hee 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 hee! Sorry to see you so sad, Zozo! Just kidding! I love to see you sad! Hee 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 hee! You'll never beat me! I was so angry, I shot a fireball at the Goblin King, but he dodged it and attacked me. He was still way too strong for me to fight him and win. Just you wait, I'll get stronger, and then you'll know how it feels to lose. I didn't want to, but I had to get out of there. From day 75 to day 78, I ran all the way back to my base. When I finally got there, I was so mad that I locked myself in my room. I can't believe I had to run away like that. I'm such a loser. I heard someone outside of my room, and when I went to check, the Silver Lobo was standing there. Sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to show you something. I've been heading on to the base. Want to come look? Okay. I followed her, and she led me to a new watchtower. You built this for me? I wanted to cheer you up. It'll help keep us all a lot safer, in case the Goblin King tries anything sneaky. That's so great. Thank you. I feel better already. I've also got something that might help, too. Greg came over and handed me a novelty hat. It's silly, but I told you a home is a good place to hang your hat, so I got you a hat. When I put the hat on, I felt a lot better and stronger, too. Before I knew it, my heart's increased to 100. I jumped for joy, and I jumped way higher than usual. Whoa, a jump boost. Thank you so much. From day 79 to day 84, I ventured back out into the lush tundra to look for the Goblin King. Now that I'm stronger, I want to try and fight him again. I looked all over, but didn't see him anywhere. I did see some black death, though. Close enough for now. Still an evil force I can test out my new strength on. I fought the black death and beat it easily. When I did, I was approached by a grateful rat. Ooh, that was very impressive fighting. I couldn't help but notice your shiny diamond sword. Someone dropped this and I picked it up to keep. But I think you should have it. Here! The rat gave me diamond leggings. This is perfect. 
From day 85 to day 89, I took my new diamond leggings and traveled back home to my base. When I got there, I was shocked to see Ogre stamping all over the place, tearing it down. No, get out of here! <laughs> oh no! Did you think we wouldn't find you? Smash, 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 smash the whole place to bits! I shot a fireball at the ogres, and they ran off into the fields! Ah, uh, no you don't! I chased after them as fast as I could. As I was pursuing the ogres, a rat jumped in front of me. Quickly, could you tell me the way to the lush tundra? My cousin lives there. I pointed him in the right direction. Thanks, you're a pal. With another good deed done, I continued my chase. From day 90 to day 94, I tracked the ogres all the way to a castle. This must be Goblin King's palace. I'd better not get too close. I'm sure he's got guards all over the place. I'll focus on these jokers for now. I decided to shoot a fireball at the guard at the castle entrance. That's what you get for messing with my home. Ouch! get a boss. Is the Goblin King here? No, no, he won't dirty his hands fighting you, little gorilla. That's my job. A plague beast emerged and came running at me. He attacked me before I could do anything, and the blow knocked me back. Uh-oh, this guy is really strong. This won't be easy. From day 95 to day 97, I continued my battle against the plague beast. It was, by far, my most dangerous fight yet. I've got to make it through this. I can't let the Goblin King win. He's already won, fool. There are only a handful of days left before his army will sweep the land, imprisoning any that dare to try to outshine the king. No, I won't let that happen. I used my jump boost to jump out of the way of his next attack and blasted him with a fireball. Then I came at him with my diamond sword and finally turned the tide of the fight. I was going to win. For my final attack, I jumped high and hit him where he least expected it. It seems I underestimated you. Perhaps you will win after all. If you can best the Goblin King himself in a one-on-one -on -one fight, that is. <laughs> I will, no matter what. I'm going to do whatever it takes to defeat the Goblin King once and for all. And just like that, the Plague Beast was defeated. On day 98, I returned to my base with a renewed sense of purpose. This golden gorilla is going to win. I just know it. I've come a long way, and I know I still have room to improve, but I feel like a real hero now. Brighter, stronger, and shinier than ever. First, the Silver Lobo spoke to me. You are Zozo. Here, take this health potion for help on your quest. I believe in you. We all deserve to shine, and you shine brighter than anyone I've ever met. That means a lot. Thank you. And then, Greg. Hey, kid. I'm proud of you. Don't leave without your hat, okay? I would never. And finally, Lyle. Remember, the Goblin King only wins fights by sneaking up on people. Don't let him sneak up on you, and you'll be able to defeat him. Thank you for believing in me. I'll try my best. On day 99, I set off on my journey to the Goblin King's castle. I passed through the lush tundra on my way and remembered my success there. I was able to help so many people. And if I can pull this off, it'll help so many more. Finally, I reached the castle. It was crawling with ogre guards. I'll never get through all of them without the Goblin King finding out I'm here. If he does, he'll be able to sneak up on me. As I was trying to come up with a plan, Alex, the warped toad, jumped out of hiding and started attacking the ogres. Alex, you came to help me. We toads believe in reciprocity. You helped me, I help you. Now get inside and finish this. Alex led the ogres away and I began to sneak into the castle. On day 100, I crept my way into the castle. That's where I saw the Goblin King looking at horses. I thought about attacking him, but I realized that would be wrong. I'm not like him. I want a fair fight. Hey, stop horsing around. Hmm? What? What's happening? Oh, wee hee hee Zozo, I see. You've come to my palace to turn yourself in? No, I'm here to fight you. Fair and square. No tricks. A Goblin King always has a few tricks up his sleeve. Suddenly, he turned invisible, and I lost sight of him. Uh-oh, he's somewhere in here, trying to sneak up on me. I listened carefully, and when I heard him moving, I used my jump boost to jump out of the way of his ambush. Ha, gotcha! I spotted him and launched a fireball at him. It hit! Ow, 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 no! You're not supposed to be so good at this! I'm supposed to win! I always win! Not anymore! I attacked with my sword next. He fought back, but I was stronger than him. 
I had learned how to defeat the forces of evil, and after a difficult fight, I finally did! The Goblin King crown fell on the floor at my feet. If I were like you, I'd take this, but I don't want to be king. I just want to go home and hang out with my friends. I'm ending this reign of terror here and now. And with one last fireball, I finished him off. It was finally over! I did it! Time to go home, hug my friends, and take a well-deserved nap. From now on, things are going to be good as gold. On day one, I spawned as a golden hydra. Whoa, this is amazing! I looked around and noticed that I was in some sort of cave. I ventured out and immediately saw some scary dread knights. There he is! Catch him! No thanks! I scurried away, the men following after me. You come back here! They started shooting darts at me! Ah! One dart hit me and I lost some hearts! Wait, I only have five hearts? This is insane! I hurried and tried to get away, but the men were too fast. They surrounded me as I felt my eyes start to close. Perfect. Everything is coming together. And with that, I passed out. On day two, I woke up in a cage. Oh, where am I? I looked around and noticed that there were more cages around me, but most of them were empty. I almost didn't notice the frog sitting in the cage nearby. He blended in with the floor really well. I was waiting for you to wake up. Come on, we gotta get out of here. But how? Even if we can get out of the cages, I don't know how to get out of the prison. I know a way out, but you need to be the one to unlock the door. I looked closer and examined the gate. I began to hit it with my heads, but that started to make me feel dizzy. The frog laughed at me. Oh, no, no, use your fire spit. Fire spit? I did what the frog said, and I spit at the lock. But it wasn't fire, it was golden little orbs. I left the cage and started firing away at the frog's cage until it opened too. Thanks. Don't mention it. I'm Zozo, by the way. I'm Freddy. Freddy and I made our way over to the exit and broke through the door, up the stairs. We were home free. On day three, Freddy and I hurried as fast as we could away from the underground prison. While we were running, I spotted some pigs and chickens and hurried to gather their meat before they could scamper away. I gathered up their meat and shared some with Freddy. We both chowed down. Thanks, Zozo. And I gotta say, that prison break was amazing. I didn't know you could spit gold. Neither did I. In fact, I didn't know much about anything except that some evil guys were after me. Freddy and I agreed to go our separate ways. I went further into the forest to explore. Maybe I would find some other hydras. Little Hydra! Huh? I turned and saw an old troll walking slowly up behind me. He looked hurt. Would you mind helping me? I was attacked and need to get back home before it gets dark. Of course! We slowly made our way to his home, a little cottage next to a river. Thank you, little Hydra. Please come inside so that you are safe. There are all kinds of monsters outside. The guy seemed nice enough, so I stayed with him for the night. On days four to five, I woke up in the troll's house. He had cooked some stew for both of us. Thank you. What did you say your name was? I'm Horace, just a poor old troll trying to make his way in the world. Horace seemed better than yesterday, but still very tired. Is there anything I can do to help you? Actually, I'm more concerned for your safety. You are the Golden Hydra after all. The Golden Hydra? A prophecy was given many years ago by a great seer. She said that a Golden Hydra would be born and it would be his destiny to either save or destroy the land. Is that me? I believe it is. What should I do? Build yourself a safe house, gather materials, strengthen yourself as much as you can. You need to be at your best. Horace gave me some stone tools and a full stack of oak planks. Use these to start. I hope to hear from you, little Hydra. Be careful who you trust. I left Horace's house to find a good place to start a base. I found a nearby lake on the plains with some nice level ground. I used my stone tools to gather additional material and started working on a modest Japanese-style gold Hydra base. It may have only been one building for me so far, but there was plenty of room on the plains for this base to expand with more buildings and features. It was all coming together when I heard some men yelling. There's the Hydra! Get him! It was more of those evil Dread Knights! Not today, you goons! I spit my orbs at them, and they all turned to gold! Oh, wow! That is not what I expected! Just then, I felt power rush through me, and I grew into a larger Hydra! 
Now I have 11 hearts. Nice. I'll beat whoever controls those Dread Knights in no time. On day six to eight, I ventured from my base to gather more information. Also, I wanted to see if I could find more creatures that needed shelter from the mysterious villain and his men. I came across some tortoises who immediately tried to run away. Hey, I'm a friend. They looked at me warily. You aren't working with the sorcerer? No, a sorcerer? Is that who's commanding all the Dread Knights? I have nothing to do with him. Look, kid, it would just be better if you left this land. It's not safe for you. The tortoises slipped away, leaving me confused. I decided to go back to Horace's house to ask him about it. A great sorcerer has purged this land and intends to use your power for his purposes. He will stop at nothing to get you. That's awful. What should I do? There is a cave nearby that has some armor and tools that we could use. I was on my way there the other day when I was attacked. That's a good place to start. Sounds like a plan. On days 9 to 10, I hurried to the cave that Horace mentioned and went to explore. Sure enough, there was a chest hidden behind some rocks. Just as I was about to open it, a great hairy spider came rushing out. Ugh, gross! He attacked me, and I was too slow to spit my golden orbs. I took quite a bit of damage. Ouch! I hurried and slithered from the cave. This is too hard. I can't defeat him by myself. Hey, are you trying to get rid of that spider too? A wolf came out from behind a tree. Yeah, I am. Why do you want him gone? He took some of my armor. I'm trying to keep myself safe from the sorcerer's goons. Me too. Maybe we can work together. We came up with a plan and went back down to the spider's lair. The wolf distracted him and I shot my golden orbs at him. He turned immediately into a gold statue. Wow. We gathered the materials in the chest, and I gave the wolf the reptile armor. Be careful out there. Zozo. Zozo. I'm Lex. Thanks, Lex. Take care of yourself. On days 11 to 12, I returned to Horus. At first, he was happy. But when I told him that I'd given Lex the armor from the chest, he got really mad. The other animals don't matter, little Hydra. What matters is that you're strong. He was acting really weird, but I couldn't blame him. He was probably scared of the sorcerer and just wanted us to be safe. You've done well, but this isn't enough. Now you must travel to the Black Forest and gather more strength potions left there by wizards of yore. This is important, little Hydra. Don't trust anyone besides me. Defeat anyone who stands in your way. I left the house, wondering why Horace didn't want me to trust anyone else. He was probably just paranoid. As I made my way to the Black Forest, I saw some more of the sorcerer's goons traveling along the river. I tried to be quiet and slither away, but they spotted me. It's the Hydra, grab him. I dodged some of their darts and shot my golden orbs at them. They tried to escape, but after a few shots, they were all statues. Nice. I soon reached the depths of the Black Forest, hoping to gather the potions Horace wanted. On days 13 to 15, I plucked up the courage to enter the sinister Black Forest. At first, there didn't seem to be anyone there, but I kept looking, wanting to find those potions. After just a few moments, I saw a family of hoglins gathered around a campfire, harmlessly warming themselves. Why does Horace want me to defeat these hoglins? They seem really nice. I slithered in, and the hoglins were taken aback. I don't mean you any harm, I'm just curious if you have any armor. The hoglins were cautious, but one answered me. Are you going to try to steal it from us like the others? Others? What others? A sorcerer's men. They have tried to steal it before. They want all the armor taken away from the creatures in the land, so they can't fight the sorcerer. What? That didn't seem right. I needed to talk to Horace about this. On days 16 to 19, I traveled back to Horace's house. I arrived, and he seemed happy to see me. But when I told him I couldn't get the strength potions from the Black Forest, he immediately turned angry. Don't you know what's at stake? You needed to get those potions. You need to get stronger. Why is it so important that I'm stronger? You are not fulfilling my expectations. I need to think this through. He told me to leave. I did, more confused than before. When I arrived back at my base, Freddy Frog was there. Hey, buddy, it's been a while. Zozo, I'm so glad you're okay. I heard that you met the sorcerer. How did you survive? What do you mean? I haven't met him. All the creatures have seen him hiding out in the woods. He's disguised as a simple old troll. Wait, 
Was he talking about Horus? I heard he's planning an attack with his goons today. He's going to the village in the plains. I had to see for myself if this was true. It couldn't be Horus, could it? I went with Freddy to the village in the plains like he said. When we got there, I saw the goons being led by a very recognizable troll. I looked closer and realized it was Horus. You manipulated me. Horus turned toward me. Oh, Zozo, you gullible little Hydra. You are too quick to trust, but you've been a hindrance. Time for a change of plans. You had no right to do that to me, and you have no right to steal from innocent creatures and people. I charged at him, spewing golden orbs. He easily outmaneuvered them, and with his powerful swing, threw me back into a building. Before I knew it, I blocked out. On days 20 to 22, I woke up with Freddy looking down at me. Oh good, you're awake. You need to help the villagers. I got up and followed Freddy to the village. Some of the buildings were on fire. Everyone, move away from the buildings. I hurried and spewed my orbs at them, extinguishing the fires. It was definitely not what the villagers were expecting. Whoa, this is amazing. How can we repay you? It might not be safe here anymore. You can all live at my base with me. I have lots of room. The villagers talked amongst themselves for a little while, then readily agreed. We made our way to my base and then gathered some needed supplies for the new houses. It was hard work, but in no time, everyone had a house of their own. Thank you, Zozo. These look amazing. On days 23 to 26, I went back to the cave where I originally spawned. It must have been important, so I figured that I should investigate. I entered the cave and it seemed very normal. I was hoping to find some sort of clue as to who my parents were. It had been a crazy couple of days, and even though I had friends, I wondered if I had family. All of a sudden, I heard a noise coming from deeper in the cave. I explored further and saw another Hydra but she was being attacked by a group of skeletons. Get away from her! I slithered down and started shooting the skeletons. Within just a few moments, those bags of bones were gone. I turned to the Hydra, but then I felt a power surge through me. I grew, and then I leveled up into an adult Hydra. I now have 18 hearts. I let out a large breath of golden fire. So-so? The Hydra looked scared of me. No need to be scared. Who are you? I'm your mother. My mother? Uh, I'm so glad I found you. Where did you go? I laid an egg and went to find some food. But when I came back, you were gone. I was so worried about you. How about you come live with me? I have a base and it'll be much safer than this cave. She happily agreed and we made our way in that direction. On days 27 to 31, as my mother and I left the cave, we happened upon Freddy again. Hey, Zozo, do you think you could help my family? He directed me toward a small alcove nearby that had been broken apart. What happened? The sorcerer's goons tried to break our alcove after we refused to leave. We managed to escape before anyone was hurt, but we don't have a home now. The frogs looked very sad, so I offered to build them a new home on my base. Really? That would be great. Thank you so much. With the frogs and my mother in tow, we continued on our way to my base. Once we arrived, we got straight to work, building a pond for the frogs and placing down a bed for my mother. I also noticed that the villagers had planted crops and gathered some animals. They even made a nice path connecting all the buildings. Thanks, guys. You've done some great work here. It was all starting to come together. I will get that golden hydra if it's the last thing I do. He is the key to all of my plans. What would you like me to do, master? I want you to follow him. Make sure he is met with challenges. He needs to reach maximum strength by the full moon. It's vital that you do this. Yes, master. On days 32 to 35, I wanted to return to the underground prison where Freddy and I were held. If Horace wanted to befriend me, why did he capture me in the first place? That's a good question. Maybe there are some answers at the prison. I asked Freddy if he wanted to come with me, and he readily agreed. We made our way down the tower where we had escaped, and noticed that there were iron golems standing around this time. That's new, and they don't look like they work for Horus. I wasn't expecting you to come back here. I flipped around to see one of the iron golems standing right behind me. Are you one of the guards? Not exactly, 
I bartered with some of Horace's goons that are corrupt. They agreed to give you to me as a bargaining chip. We weren't expecting you to escape so quickly, however. So you're not my enemy. You just want to sabotage him. Basically. So... Perhaps we can make an arrangement to stop him. What do you have in mind? I'll be in touch. I have some research to do. Just look out for a message from Puck the Honorable. Honorable? You captured my friend Freddy! Sorry, what can I say? I like frog legs. I heard Freddy gulp behind me. Don't worry, I won't eat your friend. But we'll be in touch, Zozo. And just like that, he left without even saying goodbye. Not very polite, but okay. On days 36 to 39, I went venturing into a nearby cave to find some iron ore that could help buff out my equipment. After I found enough, I built a furnace, smelted some iron ingots, and finally made myself an iron sword, iron pickaxe, and some armor. Cool! Looking good! I went digging deeper and even managed to find some diamonds! Yes! Jackpot! This will be great for some upgrades! Before I could start crafting, I heard a noise and something hit me! I turned and saw a skeleton moving around trying to shoot me again. I spewed my golden fire breath at him. Nice! The skeleton froze, but not before dropping his bow. I picked it up and realized it was enchanted. Infinite arrows! Sweet! I returned to my base with the supplies and the bow, hoping to upgrade some of my items and the houses. One of the villagers approached me. Zozo, do you think you could help me with something? Sure, what is it? Bradley, and it's about our home. I thought I had gathered everything when we came here, but I left something important there. Would you come with me? I don't feel safe going by myself. Of course, let's go! On days 40 to 43, Bradley and I ventured back to the village on the plains. We hurried to the house to grab his item. What is it you needed so badly? He rummaged around his room under his bed and then whooped in victory. Got it! Is that a paintbrush? Yeah, it's my lucky paintbrush. Are you serious? It's important to me. I shook my head. What a weird kid. But hey, at least he has it now. All of a sudden, I heard a noise outside. Shh, I think there's someone here. I looked out the window, and sure enough, there was some of Horace's goons rummaging around. But they weren't alone. They were being led by a terrifying yak this time. We tried to sneak out quietly, but Bradley made a noise, and they spotted us. Smooth move, Bradley! The goons charged at us, and I started to spew golden fire. Within just a few moments, we had nearly taken out all of the goons. The henchmen just stood, watching us. Then after a moment, he ran off with the remaining men. Coward! We looked around and noticed the goons had dropped a few healing potions before I had frozen them into gold. Nice! Now we have a little bit bigger of a potion stash, just in case. Sheesh, that was awesome! Was the paintbrush worth it, Bradley? Absolutely! On days 44 to 49, Bradley and I traveled back to the base. Once we arrived, I found a note on my door. Puck the Honorable sent me a message to meet outside my base near the river. It didn't take me long to find him. I've been doing some research about Horus and his plans. I think that if you were able to create a certain item, you can overpower Horus. Great! What is it? An amethyst sword. It's the one thing that will harm Horus, even if he reaches the full extent of his magical powers. And it may just save your life. What do I need to do? You'll need to gather two amethyst crystals and a stick. That's all you'll need to make it. Though I can't promise those crystals won't be guarded by an incredibly dangerous mob. Great. Sounds like a walk in the park. What? You expected saving the world to be easy. Oh, I just wish I hadn't been duped by Horus in the first place. Don't beat yourself up, kid. You'll get the hang of it. Huck handed me a paper with some instructions on it. This should help you. And just like that, he left. Again. I need to tell him it's polite to say your goodbyes. On days 50 to 53, I followed the instructions Puck gave me to find the crystals. It said to go to a cave and consult with the ancient being. I realized that it had led me back to the cave where I had fought the giant spider. As I entered, I noticed that the spider was still there, frozen in gold. He must be the ancient being. I wonder if there's a way I can reverse it. I went up to the spider and tried to shoot an orb at him. Nothing. A fire breath and also nothing. Then I tried to punch him. Suddenly, he turned back into his normal self. He looked down at me angrily. How dare you freeze me? I'm sorry. I was manipulated by the sorcerer to steal your items. But you did steal some of them from the wolf. He softened a little. I did. 
It was desperate and needed extra protection. Clearly, it did not work. What do you want? I was told that you have information about amethyst crystals. Yes, I was once a guardian of a great multitude of crystals. But I was forced to leave when the cavern was ambushed by an evil warden. It has been a great many years since then. Can you show me where it is? I cannot. When I desired to go back, it was no longer there. Some sort of shifting due to magic. I thanked the spider and left the cave. It was just another dead end. On my way back to the base, I noticed more of Horace's goons fighting a wolf. Hey, that's Lex. Maybe he'll want to help me. I approached as he finished the goons off. Hey, remember me? Zozo, you're alive. Yeah, I am. And I'm trying to defeat the sorcerer. I could really use your skills. Would you want to help me? I don't think I can, Zozo. I'm good at fighting his goons, but he's too powerful. I think you'd be better off on your own. Before I could even argue, he ran off into the distance. Well, that was underwhelming. Maybe he'll change his mind. On days 54 to 57, I went exploring a little more. I found myself close to where I had found Horace that first time. I wondered if he was still at his house. I decided to investigate. When I got closer, I heard voices. The master needs some items taken to him. Make sure they get there safely. It was the henchman I had seen earlier, the Yak! He had a few goons, and he was dragging some chests of things. It seemed like a good opportunity to attack. Hey, coward! The henchman turned toward me. You just can't get enough, can you? He sent the goons forward to attack. I maneuvered around them easily, and within a few moments, most of them were gold statues. The henchman got mad. Before I knew it, he attacked me. Ouch! How is he so fast? I felt my heart's dwindling. He slashed at me again, faster than any other human I had encountered. I tried to breathe my golden fire at him, but it was in vain. I need to get out of here. I hurried and slithered away, retreating into the bushes. Look who's the coward now. The henchman ran off. I didn't dare follow him. I was too weak and needed to go back home. If I can't defeat just one henchman, how am I supposed to defeat a sorcerer? He managed to take out a few of your men, master, but he could not withstand my blows. He is not even close to being ready. Yes, he is weak, but he will get stronger. Just keep attacking. Send out as many men as possible. They're disposable. Will do, master. On days 58 to 62, I made it back to my base. I was met with a much needed surprise. Zozo, we made you something, sweetie. My mom led me to the edge of the base. Whoa, is this a statue of me? It was a hydra, but it wasn't completely gold. It was more of an orange color. Actually, it's a statue of your father. My father? I wanted to tell you earlier, but I didn't know if you were ready. He died right before you were born. He was trying to protect us. He couldn't wait to meet you, Zozo. I looked up at the statue. It's amazing. It's not done yet. We still need some more quartz for the teeth. Would you like to help us? Of course. I headed to the desert where I had previously seen some ruins made out of quartz and collected those materials for the statue. After giving the quartz to mom, she quickly added the teeth to the statue and now it truly looked magnificent. On days 63 to 66, I woke up to someone calling my name. I went outside. It was Lex. Hey, Lex, what's up? I went back to that cave with the spider, and to my surprise, he wasn't a gold statue anymore. Oh yeah, I should have warned you. No harm done. He actually told me that you were looking for a cavern with amethyst crystals in it. I think I might actually know where that is. Really? Show me. Lex led the way to a small desert. We finally arrived at what looked like a rock formation with a door. Great, let's just push open the door and head inside. We tried to push, pull, and roll, but the stone didn't budge. I even tried my golden fire on it. No luck. Hmm, maybe there's a special combination or code word? Maybe, but I have no idea what it might be. It was disappointing, but now I knew where it was. At least I could come back to it later. Let's head back. How about you stay with us? You don't have to be alone, Lex. He sighed. I know, I was wrong and scared, but I know you're our best chance at stopping the sorcerer. Thanks for not giving up on me. Of course, that's what friends do. Lex smiled and we headed home. On days 67 to 70, Bradley approached me again. Hey, Zozo, do you think you could help me with something else? 
Is it another paintbrush, Bradley? No, actually. I wanted to practice shooting with the bow I have. Do you think you could help me with some target practice? Of course. Where did you have in mind? There's actually an archery area near my old house. Maybe we can even bring some of the stuff back to the base. That sounds like a great idea. We headed back toward Bradley's old home. When we got there, we noticed some movement outside the houses. Hey, those are the tortoises I met earlier. They told me to take a hike. Maybe we should go. Then I noticed the tortoises were fighting each other over some food. I approached carefully. Hey, friends, remember me? Ugh, you again. We don't need your help, Hydra. You're just making things worse for us. The sorcerer and his goons have driven us out of our homes, and now we hardly have food. The leader came toward me and snapped his teeth. I don't want to hurt you. He snapped at me again, and I had no choice but to spew golden fire at him. After he turned into a statue, I punched him. He quickly came back to life, looking surprised. Why did you do that? Like I said, I'm not here to hurt you. In fact, we would love for you to stay at our base. It's safe, and there's plenty of food. There's no need to fight each other. Thank you, Hydra. We are in your debt. On day 71 to 74, we made it back to the base. This time, we were met with an unwanted surprise. My mom rushed out to us. Zozo, they're attacking the base. We need your help. I slithered over and saw the Yak and his Dread Knights waiting for me. Hey, you don't belong here. The henchman looked at me and just like before, attacked in a flash. I still wasn't strong enough, but I knew I needed to protect my friends. Using all of my strength, I let out the largest burst of golden fire I could muster. Not bad, Hydra, but not good enough. Come and find me when you are ready. I'll be waiting with your precious friend. And before I knew it, the henchman left. I had managed to statuify his goons, but he escaped, again. Wait, what did he say about a friend? I slithered inside as fast as I could and realized that my mother was nowhere to be found. Mom, mom, he took her and I had no idea where she went. I retreated to my house blind with rage. And then I started to cry. This was all too much. How was I ever supposed to defeat anyone like this? I stayed in my house for a while, not letting anyone in. Finally, after a long time, I heard a knock at the door. Zozo, it's Lex. We have something to show you. I reluctantly left the house, not wanting anyone to see me like this. But they needed someone, and I needed to be strong for them. Lex showed me that they had fixed up the crops, bred the animals, and improved the security by building some walls. Great. Thanks, Lex. That's not all. He turned me toward the statue of my dad, and I realized there was a smaller version next to it. It was of my mom. You'll get her back, Zozo. We believe in you. I didn't know what to say. I just nodded. And you are sure he is getting stronger? Yes, Master. He is almost to his full form. Excellent. Then the plan is working. The mother will eventually bring him to us. Good work. Thank you, Master. On day 75 to 78, Puck the Honorable left me another note. I met him at our customary spot next to the river. Hello again, Zozo. What do you want, Puck? Someone's in a hurry. I have important information and a gift for you. I hear you are having some trouble with Horace's henchmen. I have some important information. His whereabouts. He actually lives very close to Horace. It's a bit hush-hush, but I have my ways. He handed me a map and I went to grab it. Be careful, Zozo. You don't know what you'll find there. Give me the paper, Puck. Do not lose yourself along the way. Remember what you are fighting for. I know what I'm fighting for, Puck. My mom has been taken by those creeps, and I intend on saving her. Then I'm going to put the henchmen and Horus in their rightful place. Puck handed me the paper. Good boy. Now go get your mother back. On day 79 to 84, I raced to the henchman's house. If there was a chance he had my mom, I was going to find her and defeat him once and for all. I followed the directions and found myself outside of a large wall. Inside, it was a modest looking house. This is where the henchman stays? Quite a cozy home he made for himself. I snuck around to see if he was inside, but I didn't see anything. Suddenly, I felt a gust of wind. The yak was standing right behind me. Come to retrieve your mommy. Coming after me was one thing, but involving my mom was a step too far. Your mother gave you everything, and you still can't save her. 
I'm going to beat you, Yak, for her! I felt a power grow within me, and I leveled up into a fully grown Hydra with 50 hearts! I got bigger, stronger, and even gained the Claw Strike ability! No, this isn't what was supposed to happen! Horus promised me I wouldn't be defeated by you! Be careful who you trust, henchman! And with a swipe of my claws, I defeated him! He burst into golden sparks and was gone! Zozo! I looked and saw my mother coming toward me. She'd managed to escape. Mom, did he hurt you? I'm fine. I'm so proud of you. Look at how strong you are. You look so much like your father did. I'm so glad you're okay. Come on, Mom. Let's get you back home. Oh, and before we go, I found this while I was imprisoned. I figured you might want it. It was a golden key. On days 85 to 89, my mom and I arrived back at the base. Everyone was so happy to see my mom, and they ushered us over to the statues. We almost finished it while you were gone, but we wanted you to put on the finishing touch. Freddy handed me a few glowstone blocks, which I added to my dad's statue, completing his fire breath. It was perfect. And I have more amazing news, Freddy. The golden key my mom found at the henchman's base. I think it's literally the key to getting into the Amethyst Crystal Cave. The henchman and Horus must have known that the Amethyst Sword could foil his grand plan. That's why he had the key to unlock the cavern. I've got to get over there now. I rushed out of the base toward the desert. As I arrived at the door, I felt my heart leap. This is it. It's finally coming together. I used the golden key to open the door. Here I go. I made my way down the dark tunnel, which eventually opened up into a cave system. Inside were hundreds of glowing amethyst crystals, all being watched over by a warden. This isn't going to be easy. I got right behind it, and before it knew what was happening, I let out a large burst of golden fire. He let out a terrible scream, but he didn't turn into a statue. I took a swipe at him with my claws instead. This time, he screamed in agony. I kept swiping, avoiding his blows as best as I could. My hearts were dwindling, but after just a few more moments, the warden was gone. Yes! I hurried and collected as many amethyst crystals as I could hold before hurrying out of the cavern. Time to end this, Horus. On days 90 to 94, I exited the cavern, blinking in the sunlight. Nice to see you again, little Hydra. I looked and saw Horus standing right in front of me. I was about to swipe him into oblivion when his magic froze me in place. Please, none of that. I just want to talk. I stared at him. What could you possibly want to talk to me about? You've gone out of your way to torture me. Don't you see, Hydra? I have strengthened you. You have become the Golden Hydra of the Prophecy. All thanks to me. You? You had nothing to do with it. Oh, don't even think for a minute that you would have accomplished anything without me. I made sure that you had difficulties so that you could learn. I made sure that you would eventually get the potion that would bring you to full power. You sabotaged your own henchman? He was disposable at best. But think of what we can do together, little Hydra. We can rule this land together. Of course, it'll need to be destroyed before it can be built back up. But we can accomplish that if you follow me. Never. This is your last chance. Watch the world burn around you before I possess your mind or willingly serve me. I hissed at him. Very well. Somehow, Horus made all my amethyst that I'd worked hard and suffered to collect all disappear. Be sure to be at your best by the full moon, little Hydra. In the meantime, enjoy my wrath. I heard Horus laughing, and then it all went dark. On days 95 to 97, I woke up to pitch black. Where am I? Horus must have buried me underground. I looked at what I assumed was up and started to dig. It wasn't too deep, but by the time I saw sunlight, I was exhausted. I'm getting really tired of him. I tried to catch my breath, but then I noticed a note on the ground next to me. It read, Say goodbye to your honorable friend. My blood turned cold as I raced toward Puck's dungeon. No, 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 please don't let me be too late. When I got there, the whole place was demolished. I looked around, hoping to find anything. And I heard a groan from beneath some rocks. Puck! I moved the rubble and saw him on the ground. He was in really bad shape. I guess Horus figured out who my sources were. You're going to be okay, Puck. Let me help you up. 
Puck coughed. <coughs> Don't worry about me, Zozo. Go, protect your mom and your friends. He's heading to your base next. And with one last breath, Puck the Honorable passed. I let out a giant roar as I mourned my friend. But I had to get to my base. I needed to stop Horace before he caused any more destruction. On day 98, I arrived too late. What was once my base was now in ruins. I ran around frantically. Mom, Lex, Bradley, Freddy. I didn't hear anyone answer. I slumped down and was about to give up when I heard a small voice. Zozo? I looked up and saw my mom limping towards me. Freddy limped alongside her. Mom, Freddy, where is everyone else? A lot of them didn't make it out, Zozo. Bradley and Lex managed to run and hide with me, but nobody else was fast enough. We're lucky to be alive. I let out another loud roar in agony. Puck was gone. All the villagers and tortoises were gone. I had tried so hard to protect everyone, and I had failed. I felt my whole body slump. Hey, everything is going to be fine. Do you know why? Why? You are the Golden Hydra, and you are going to put a stop to Horace and his destruction. Mom slipped me something. It was a key. Horace dropped this before he left. It must be to his base. I looked at the key in shock. You are going to get back your amethyst crystals, finish the amethyst sword, and you will put a stop to all of this. Promise? Promise. On day 99, I headed to Horace's base. It had massive black walls, and inside there was a huge tower raising high into the sky. I carefully entered the front wall gate. To my surprise, the courtyard was completely empty. I explored a bit and located a back door, probably for the goons, and I used the key to get inside. Freddy, you're the best. I snuck up the passageway and went to open the door to the main chamber. A dread knight spotted me immediately. It's the Golden Hydra. I quickly took him out. So much for being stealthy. I was a Hydra after all, a golden one at that. It was hard to keep a low profile. I opened the chamber, and to my surprise, only Horace stood inside, smiling at me. Did you really think it would be that easy, Hydra? But at last, your day early. What exactly was your plan here? Give me back the amethyst crystals, and nobody has to get hurt, Horace. No. I was prepared this time. I smacked him back with my claws and grabbed for the crystals. Before he knew it, I was down the passageway. Stop that Hydra! I made it back to my base and hurriedly crafted the amethyst sword out of the two amethyst crystals and a stick. It was time to defeat Horus once and for all. It, on day 100, I made my way back to Horus's base. Perfect, a dramatic ending, just like I wanted. Horace was waiting for me outside. Are you ready for your reign of terror to finally end, Horace? You're exactly where I want you, Zozo. When this battle is over, I'll take control of your body and use you as just another tool to take over this world. Not if me and the Amethyst Sword have anything to say about it. This time, I wasn't playing around. He fired a magical energy blast at me, but I was so strong now, I tanked it and ran right in. Oh, no, I may have made an error here. But that time for talk was over. I ran in and hit him with the amethyst sword again and again, weakening him a little more each time. He unleashed his guards on me, but they were taken care of quickly. Many sword swings later, when Horus was on the edge of defeat, I stopped attacking and stepped back for a moment. You can't win! I am an all-powerful sorcerer! Silence is golden, Horus! With one blast of my golden spit, Horus was turned into a harmless golden statue forevermore! At long last, the creatures of the overworld can breathe easy again! On day one, I spawned as an itty-bitty fire Godzilla. This is rad! But wait, I've only got three hearts. What? That's not rad at all. But when I focus real hard, I can make little fires. Look, I just set that tree on fire. Uh oh, it looks like I upset the baboons who were living there. They're coming after me. I better hightail it out of here. I ran off deep into the forest. Being a tiny baby fire Godzilla wasn't working out great for me so far. Maybe if I can get bigger and stronger, I can use my powers to help people rather than just burn their houses down. That'll help me make some friends around here. Maybe that big, tough, warped Moscow will be my friend. Hey, I'm Zozo. I'm pretty new around here. Wanna hang out? 
Hey, hey, not so fast, buddy. You want to hang out here? You got to pay the toll. Empty your pockets, little fire Godzilla. But I don't have any money. Then I guess you better come with me, Zozo. If you can't pay, you got to work. That was another bridge I'd already burned. I needed to run before the warped Moscow could get his big buggy hands on me. I grabbed a few sticks from the forest and hid in a cave. These would make some pretty good torches with a little bit of my fire, so it won't be too dark in here. I proceeded to place down some torches before deciding to go to sleep for the night. I'm gonna need to get a lot stronger if I want to last out here. This place isn't kind to baby fire Godzillas like me. On day two, I woke up in the cave to find my torches had gone out overnight. It was so cold and dark. What if there are spiders in here? I should get moving. I left the cave and entered the forest to explore my surroundings. Wow, this forest is huge! So many trees, so much wood to burn. I needed to be careful in here or I'd set everything on fire. When I build my own base, it should probably be made out of stone. I needed to break down a couple of these trees and gather some sticks and wood to make a wooden pickaxe. Perfect! This will be great for mining stone! Now I needed to find a good place to build my base. Maybe somewhere around here? Wait, has somebody already built a cabin here? What's happening here? A druid rushed out of the cabin. Hey, hey, keep your distance, friendo. I just finished this place. I don't need you burning it down. I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to burn your cabin down. I just needed to find a place to make my base. Base? What? Are you one of Lochnar's guys? What? No, I'm Zozo. Who's Lochnar? He's a necromancer. He's trying to raise an army of the dead. He and his boys have been harassing people about money around here lately. The druid returned back into his cabin after bidding me farewell. Money? That sounds just like that warped Moscow from yesterday. He must have worked for this Lochnar guy. I better start mining for stone near the druid's cabin. He'd probably make a decent neighbor. By day three, I started gathering materials for my base. I used my wooden pickaxe to start mining stone in a cave next to the druid's place. Hope he doesn't mind a little construction noise. Hey, keep down that racket, Zozo. I'm reading. Now that I know there's a necromancer out there building an army of the dead, I should probably go pay attention to home security. First of all, I took the time to clear out an area and build a big stone wall. Yes. This should keep out that warped Moscow if he tries to hassle me for more money. And I won't be able to accidentally burn this wall down either. While I was at it, I needed to get myself a weapon. Maybe I could use some of my spare sticks and wood to make a wooden sword. Hopefully I don't burn it to a crisp. Now I'm looking well prepared. While I was making my way towards the druid's cabin, I noticed something crawling out of the forest. It looked like an elder skulk. Better take care of it before it gets too close to my base. Don't you know it's rude to trespass, Mr. Skulk? Let's go! Hiya! With this sword, the Elder Skulk was no match for me. After I hit it a few times, skillfully dodging its attempts to hit me back, it went scuttling off into the forest again. Nobody beats Fire Godzilla! And clearly that fight made a big difference because I was starting to get bigger and stronger. I had five hearts now, and I could let out a terrifying Godzilla roar! On days four and five, I decided to go a little further into the forest to mine some more stone for my base. The wall was nice, but it wasn't exactly cozy. I needed a roof over my head. I already used some of my spare stone to make a stone pickaxe. But when I ventured out into the deep part of the woods, I ran into an old enemy, the Warped Moscow. You really thought you could get away without paying the toll? You really have no idea who you're dealing with, kid. You don't want my boss to have a problem with you. Your boss? Is he a necromancer? <laughs> you're smarter than you look, Zozo. My boss, Lochnar the Necromancer. He's gonna come take over all this soon enough. And if you're not with him, you're against him. I'd never be the guy who wants to take over a forest by force. I may burn stuff down sometimes, but I'm still a good guy. Then I guess I've got to destroy you. And Moscow came at me so fast, I was knocked back off my feet. I pulled out my wooden sword and tried to parry all of his attacks. You can't hold me off forever, Zozo. But I was a little faster than he was. Even with my wooden sword, I was able to get the jump on the warped Moscow and defeat him. Looks like I can handle myself decently now. I should probably spend a little more time out of the forest though. On day six to eight, I depleted my mine in the forest. At least I was able to find some iron ore though and craft myself a cool iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Let's just see someone try to mess with me now. But after getting attacked by the Moscow, I wanted to get away from the forest for a while. I decided to take a trip up to the mountain and enjoy that clean mountain air. And I can't burn anything down up here either. It's perfect. But suddenly, a mountain troll approached me, and it seemed like he didn't want to share the mountain with anyone. This mountain isn't big enough for the both of us, even if you are the puniest fire godzilla I've ever seen. 
I'm just visiting, man. You don't need to be so mean about it. How dare you call me mean? I'm gonna crush you into dust for that. He was so big, and he started chasing me. My only advantage was that I was much faster than him, yes. so I could keep my lead. That's where my iron pickaxe came through. With my iron pickaxe, I quickly mined a big hole in the ground, then carried on running. With my trap set, I decided to taunt the mountain troll by calling him a slowpoke. He ran up to me not looking down, until he fell into the hole and he couldn't climb back out. A uh, little help in here? I think you've earned yourself a timeout, mountain troll. On days 9 and 10, I decided to travel further up into the mountain until I found a mountain cave hidden among the rocks. Maybe there will be some treasures hidden in here. Better take a look. I walked into the cave, iron sword at the ready, using the natural light of my fire to light the way. That's when I hit the jackpot. Gold ore deposits. Yes. Now that's what I'm talking about. I started to mine the gold, when suddenly, despite my fire, it started to get extremely cold inside of the cave. It sent a chill down my spine. Hello there, little creature. I turned, and that's when I saw him right there, staring at me. It was Lochnar the Necromancer. Somehow, I could feel the power coming off of him. It was time for me to even the score and use my Fire Godzilla roar. But Lochnar just laughed in response. <laughs> Be quiet, boy. Do you have any idea who you're dealing with? When my army walks the earth, every flame like yours will be snuffed out. I wasn't gonna take that sitting down. I ran at Lochnar with my iron sword and prepared to hit him. But with one strike from him, I was thrown back across the cave. Uh -oh. You're so weak. It's pathetic. You're not even worth destroying yet. Perhaps when you're a little stronger. And with a flash, Lochnar was gone, and I was left terrified. If even my fire Godzilla roar did nothing, what hope did I have against him? But it wasn't all bad. I noticed then that I still wasn't alone in the cave. There was a fire villager waiting in there too. When Lochnar was gone, he ran towards me. I can't believe you survived. Lochnar has been going after all of the flame creatures in the land. But why? What have we ever done to him? He's a necromancer. He's trying to raise an army of the undead. And everyone knows the weakness of the undead is fire. He needs to destroy us because we're the biggest threat to him. Then you're not safe here either. You better come back to my base so we can figure out a plan to stop this. On days 11 through 14, I started expanding my base to make room for my new fire villager friend. Just like me, he was perfectly suited to a fireproof stone house. I built rooms for him and me and another room where we could hang out together. But this took a lot of stone and I soon needed to leave the base and mine more. I returned to the mine near the druid's cabin, and even though it was exhausted, it still contained some materials. While I was gathering more stone, I suddenly felt that cold feeling again. Oh no, does this mean the necromancer is behind me again? Not quite, Zozo. I'm merely one of his servants. He brought me back to life, so I will serve his every order, including destroying you! It was the Black Death, a plague doctor brought back from the dead. I drew my sword and prepared to battle, but by then, the Black Death was already on me. He hit me and took out some hearts. This guy was way more powerful than me. I ran further into the mine, hoping to find some kind of escape route, but the Black Death was gaining on me. I needed some kind of advantage. Wait, is that a chest? It was a chest. Maybe something in there can save me. I opened up the chest and found a fire aspect enchantment inside. This would give my sword flaming strikes. Perfect. I quickly used the anvil next to the chest to apply the enchantment to my sword. Take this, Black Death. Boom, that got him. The Black Death was set on fire and went running back out of the cave. Fire really does scare off the undead. Safe from the Black Death for now, I traveled back to my base and started making the wall even taller. But now, knowing just how effective fire was against the undead, I made some flaming torches to put on the wall. This should keep out any uninvited guests. On day 15, I went to check on the fire villager and make sure he was settling in nicely. I know from first-hand experience, it isn't easy to be a fire creature. I find it very comfortable in here, Zozo. Thank you. It's much nicer than having to stay in some damp old cave all day. So tell me, what's the deal with this Lochnar guy? Everyone's been telling me that he's trying to raise some kind of army of the undead. Who is he? Everything you've heard is true, but there's more. People say that Lochnar is over a thousand years old, and because he's already dead, he can't be destroyed. Centuries ago, he was defeated by a legendary hero and locked up in the swamp of vileness. 
but somehow he came back again and he's trying to finish what he started all those years ago, making an army of the undead so powerful that he'll rule the world forever. Can the legendary hero come back to defeat him? It sounds like we really need him right now. That was a long time ago, Zozo. The legendary hero is probably extremely old now, if he's even alive. No, if we want to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer, we need to find a new hero. Like who? Well, like you, Zozo. You survived an encounter with him and saved me back in the cave. No way. Have you seen me? I'm just a little fire Godzilla. The only reason I survived was because he said I was too weak to be worth destroying. I'd stand no chance against him in a real fight. Do you think I could survive a fight with Lochnar? I think I'd need to get a lot stronger first. On days 16 to 19, I started putting together a plan with the Fire Villager. If Lochnar is destroying fire creatures because he knows they're a threat to his undead army, we better gather up as many fire creatures as we can. Great idea, Zozo. If memory serves, Lochnar's undead minions were keeping a Blaze prisoner in an underground cavern near here. Then I guess I better go rescue him. After hours of searching the forest, I found a secret entrance to an underground area, sneakily hidden among some trees. Hopefully I'm not too late to help the blaze down there. I rushed through the entrance. I made my way into the insides of the underground cavern and took a look around, trying not to draw too much attention to myself. I saw a lava river running through the bottom of the cavern, so my fire wasn't too out of place here. Wait, are those wither skeletons? They were! A bunch of wither skeletons were scattered everywhere along the path leading deeper into the cavern. They must be guarding the prison cell where the blaze is. I ran in with my new fire aspect sword and started to fight them off as I went deeper and deeper into the cavern. After I took most of them, I unleashed my fire Godzilla roar. It scared some of the wither skeletons so bad, they ran off faster than their bones could shake. Clearly, all of this fighting was worth some pretty great XP because I grew to almost twice my size with almost twice the armor and twice the hearts. Maybe I can be strong enough to take on Lochnar with the right training. But first, I broke open the prison with my iron pickaxe and freed the blaze. Thanks for getting me out of there. It was really starting to get stuffy. Don't mention it, buddy. How did you get captured? Well, I was out here searching for the Kyther of Light when I got ambushed by all those skeletons. You were looking for what? The Kyther of Light. It's the weapon that the legendary hero used to defeat Lochnar all those years ago. It's said to be the most powerful weapon against the undead in the world. Oh, wow. Then I should probably start looking for it, too. Come back to my base. I want to know more. On days 20 to 22, Blaze and I returned to the base, only to see it being attacked by a horde of zombies. Even the torches I'd added to the walls didn't seem to scare them off. Lochnar was making some really tough undead for us to face. Thankfully, with Blaze at my side, the fight didn't last long. With his flames and my fire sword, we were able to take on the zombies and send them back from once they came. So long, you undead meanies. It feels so good to be free and fighting again. Glad you're back in the groove, Blaze. But while the zombies weren't too difficult to defeat, this incident did make me realize our base needed some better defense. Or at least something to scare off potential attackers. That's when I had a great idea for the statue. The perfect thing to keep the undead away. I started working on the base of the statue with excitement. This is sure to keep the mobs at bay once it's done. Can you tell what it's gonna be? And if you want more adventures like this, subscribe to Zozo, because believe me, the best is yet to come. With Blaze here at the base, I've still got to do one more thing, add a new room for him. With me, Blaze, and the Fire Villager all together, we're a fiery force to be reckoned with. On days 23 to 26, the base came under attack worse than ever before. I woke up to find the base surrounded by mutant skeletons, who were bigger, faster, and stronger than even wither skeletons. I ran out with my fire aspect sword and started attacking them, one by one. Each mutant skeleton took several hits with the sword to down. These guys were tougher than any grunt enemy I'd faced so far. A little help here, guys? Luckily for me, Blaze and the fire villager were there to help. With the three of us working together, we were able to drive off the remaining mutant skeletons back into the woods. That'll teach you to attack our base, skellies. Oh look! One of the mutant skeletons dropped a bow. Yes. That's perfect! I needed a good long-range weapon for my arsenal. Hmm, what should I do next? Zozo! Yes, Blaze? Now we've fought off the mutant skeletons, you should start exploring the deep dark woods for the Kyther of Light. We need it to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. Good idea, Blaze! I journeyed out into the deepest, darkest part of the forest, knowing it would be the exact kind of place where Lochnar's minions would be waiting for me. And I was right, but I wasn't the only one. There was a fire elemental being surrounded by mutant zombies. The strongest zombies yet! Lucky for me, I had my new bow. 
I pulled it out, keeping a distance as I fired arrows at the mutant zombies. They seemed so shocked by my surprise attack, they retreated further into the dark of the forest. I had saved the fire elemental. Want to come back to my base, little buddy? I'm collecting fire creatures. He seemed eager, so we headed back to the base. I built a new room to house the fire elemental, and built in a new base defense. Large holes dug into the ground around the base, so any stumbling zombies thinking of attacking would fall right in. I'm feeling safer already. On days 27 to 31, I started off by asking Blaze to tell me everything he knows about the Kyther of Light, seeing as it may be our best chance to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. It's an ancient weapon, Zozo, supposedly created by a powerful group of sorcerers, for if there was ever a great evil they needed to strike down. The legend goes that only someone pure of heart can wield the Kyther. To a being of evil, it's useless. But how can I find it? Even the most powerful weapon in the world is only useful if it's in our hands. Hmm. Perhaps the legendary hero would have hidden the Kytha in the last place the undead would think to look. The Nether. Oh no, the Nether? That's one of the most dangerous places out there. I guess if it's the only place I can find the Kytha, it's off to the Nether I go. With my sword and my bow, I set off for an old Nether portal in the woods. It's now or Nether. Yeah, bad joke, sorry. On the other side of the portal, it was all flames and lava. A fire Godzilla honestly looked kind of at home here. What didn't look at home was a huge, scary pigless, running straight towards me. You must be Zozo. I guess you're here looking for the Kyther of Light. Brave kid. And I guess you're here to find the Kyther too, before I can find it. You're a smart kid too, but I've got orders direct from Lochnar. Only one of us is leaving the Nether. Let's go. I tried to draw my bow, but the pigless was too fast for me. I was lucky enough to pull out my sword just in time to counter his attack. Before he knew it, I hit him back and eventually managed to hit him in a way and made him touch lava, and due to that he screamed a bit and moved away. You're tougher than you look, but I'll get you next time, you little twerp. And with that, he ran off into the depths of the nether. On days 32 to 35, I traveled deeper into the nether, leaving the wastes and entering the Crimson Forest. Wow, this place is super scary. If the legendary hero really hid the Kyther here, he must have been one tough warrior. The Nether has some of the scariest mobs around, but I was surprised to see a familiar face amongst all the trees and lava. It was a baboon, just like the one I met on my first day here. Hey, aren't you the one who burned down my tree? I'm sorry, Mr. Baboon. It was an accident. I'm a fire Godzilla. Sometimes I burn stuff down. Whatever. It doesn't matter now. What are you doing in the Crimson Forest? I'm looking for the Kyther of Light to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. Wait, you too? He attacked my family with some zombies. I heard the Kyther might be hidden in the Soul Sand Desert. Let's travel together. We have better odds. Sounds good to me, Mr. Baboon. We traveled together to the Soul Sand Desert, which was every bit as bleak and barren as the name suggests. I then noticed Lochnar the Necromancer standing on top of a floating island. Hello again, Zozo, was it? Nothing about you was particularly memorable. You're all smug now, Lochnar, but you won't be when we find the Kyther and defeat you. You won't be able to find anything when you're dead. Suddenly, the ground below me and Mr. Baboon began to shake. I drew my bow and fired at Lochnar, but he didn't even flinch. It was useless. If we couldn't escape, we'd be done for. That's when I had an idea. I turned and fired my bow at one of the gas. That should get the attention of him and his ghastly friends. With Lochnar preoccupied with the ghast, Mr. Baboon and I ran away, back towards the nether portal. That was some quick thinking back there, Zozo. You really saved our skins. I couldn't have done it without you. Come back to the base with me. You can join our anti-Lochnar squad. And with that, we exited the nether. On days 36 to 39, I returned back to the base with the Baboon. I built him a little treehouse because he didn't find the stone fortress as comfy as me and my fire creature friends. I gathered my new base mates together, the fire villager, Blaze, the fire elemental, and the baboon. I needed to hear their thoughts on my hunt for the Kyther. It wasn't in the nether waste, the crimson forest, or the soul sand desert. If the Kyther really is hidden in the nether, where could it be? You're telling me you didn't check the basalt deltas? The basalt deltas? What's that? It's the most dangerous place in the nether, Zozo. If the legendary hero really didn't want the Kyther to be found, that'd be the best place to hide it. The most dangerous place in the nether? I can't go there yet. The rest of the nether was already dangerous enough. If the Kyther was really in the basalt deltas, I needed to get stronger to get there. And I needed a little more inspiration. That's why I started working more on the statue. I must say, it's coming along quite nicely. From days 40 to 43, Blaze approached me, knowing I was feeling nervous about going back into the nether. 
Look, Zozo, the nether is a scary place. I know, I used to live there. But sometimes, when you can't fight your way through, you need to sneak. But Blaze, I can't sneak. I'm a fire Godzilla. I'm too easy to spot. I know, I know. But that's where my new plan comes in. There's a potion recipe hidden in a book I left in a lava canyon near here. If you can go get it for me, I'll make you a potion you'll find extremely useful. So that's exactly what I did. I found my way to the underground lava canyon. It was really hot down there, but thankfully, fire Godzillas don't mind the heat. There had to be a chest down there somewhere. If someone left a book down here on its own, it'd just burn up. But my thoughts were interrupted when suddenly, a huge serpent tried to grab me. It was a heck of a jump scare. I'm not on the menu, so slither on by, you reptile. I managed to hit it and knock it into the fiery depths below. That will teach you to mess with a fire Godzilla. As I continued to explore, I saw the chest tucked away in a corner. Let's take a look inside. A book, jackpot. I then proceeded to leave the lava canyon and make my way back to the base. I gave the book over to Blaze and he made me a potion. This right here is a potion of invisibility. Wow. It might make your journey into the basalt deltas a little less dangerous. Thanks, Blaze. This is perfect. On days 40 to 49, I made my way back to the nether portal deep in the forest. Here goes nothing. After landing in the nether, I made my way through to the basalt deltas. My friends weren't kidding when they said this place was dangerous. It looks impossible to even build here. I took the potion of invisibility and started to sneak through. There were sheer cliffs everywhere. I had to be careful so that I didn't fall. Help me, please, someone help me. Oh no, is that an illager? What's he doing in here? And why is he surrounded by endermen? I can't just leave him like that. I need to help him, even if it means wasting my invisibility. Still keeping my distance, I pulled out my bow. I opened fire at the endermen, causing them to teleport away. Yes. That gave me a window to get the illager out of there. Come with me if you want to live. Me and the illager ran for the hills until we were out of the basalt delta and back in the much safer soul sand valley. Thank you, kind stranger. You saved me. How can I ever repay you? You can tell me everything you know about the Kyther of Light. I need it to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. Wait, the Kyther of Light? That reminds me of an old poem I used to hear all the time when I was a kid. Who seeks the Kyther, brave and true, venture into the forest blue? The forest blue? Wait, that sounds like the warped forest. It's the only place in the nether I haven't checked. Come with me, we'll go find it. On days 50 to 53, me and my new friend the Illager made our way into the warped forest, one of the slightly nicer parts of the nether. I might have even enjoyed it if we weren't ambushed by that pigless I fought earlier. Hey, looky here, it's that dweeb, Zozo. Name calling? Really? That's just uncalled for, man. No, Zozo, what's uncalled for is you being here. Me and the rest of Lochnar's boys have already found the Kyther, and it's far away from here. You're gonna get destroyed in the nether for nothing. That's it, you're going down, Pigless. But Pigless pulled a dirty trick. He didn't go for me, he went straight for the Illager, taking him down immediately. No, you can't do that. I can do whatever I want. Let's tango, Zozo. We clashed again, but this time I was stronger than before. I dodged his attacks easily, and with a few well-placed strikes from my fire sword, Pigless was done for. With him gone, I was all alone in the nether again. Maybe Pigless had lied about them taking the Kyther. I had to explore and find out. There was a bastion remnant, an ancient ruined fortress nearby, and it seemed like the exact kind of place the legendary hero might have hidden the Kyther. Instead, all I found was a great beast cowering in the shadows. Is the Pigless gone? That guy dragged me along with him to help him find the Kyther. Most of the rest of our team was destroyed by nether mobs. It was horrible. It's okay, I defeated the Pigless. You said he made you work for him. Do you have any idea where they may have taken the Kyther? Uh, tough to say. I think Pigless mentioned something about taking it back to the camp. He probably meant the one in the wasteland, back outside the nether. Perfect, so at least I know where to look next. Let's get out of here. Wait, before you go, you deserve a reward for taking out that jerk Pigless. I was gonna use it myself, but here, it's a knockback enchantment. Your strikes will knock back your enemies now. Oh, finally, some good luck. From days 54 to 57, I returned to my base and started making some adjustments. I added some guard towers so that we could spot any incoming threats faster. Just as I finished repairing and adding the knockback enchantment to my iron sword, the fire villager staying in the base approached me, looking very worried. Zozo, I need a hand. I've been looking into it, and I've seen that a mutant zombie is skulking out in the forest outside. You should probably go take care of it while I'm working on an extremely important potion. This would be the perfect opportunity to try my new knockback ability. Yes. 
I ran out into the forest, and just as the fire villager had told me, there was a mutant zombie making its way towards our base. I needed to put a stop to it. Come on, mutant zombie, you're no match for me. And I was right. With the knockback enchantment on my fire sword, I defeated it in no time and headed back to the base. Great work, Zozo. And here's your reward. I made a potion of slow falling. When you take it, it eliminates fall damage. You never know when that'll come in handy. On days 58 to 62, I continued work on the statue. I was really pleased with how it was coming along. Can you guess what it is yet? Suddenly, I heard the baboon yell out in panic from his treehouse. Guys, something is coming towards us. I looked out and saw a mob coming towards us. Creepers, courtesy of Lochnar the Necromancer. This is bad, this is really bad. But before we could do anything, the first wave of creepers had already hit. Several of them exploded, taking out huge chunks of the defensive wall, and others started crawling through the new gaps. Uh -oh. I decided to rush in and finally get rid of the creeper menace. They started exploding again, taking out chunks of the base. By the time I managed to turn the tide of the fight, huge portions of our base had already been destroyed. When I had the advantage, the last surviving creeper ran off back into the forest. The fight was over! for now. We need to start rebuilding immediately. Blaze, Fire Villager. Wait, where's Baboon? That's when we realized the Creepers had blown up Baboon's treehouse with Baboon inside of it. From days 63 to 66, hungry for fiery vengeance, I followed the last remaining Creeper back into the woods. You and your friends aren't going to get away with destroying Mr. Baboon. I chased him into the forest and saw him disappear down into an underground cavern. I was so angry, I didn't even think about how dangerous it could be to chase a creeper into an enclosed place. I hopped down into the cavern, but the creeper was nowhere to be seen. Instead, I found a book laying on the ground containing a secret note. Invade the base and destroy them all. Any survivors must return to the camp in the desert. G-O-A-W. G-O-A-W? Who's that? Wait, the camp in the desert. That's where they must be keeping the Kyther of Light. Yes. It was only then that I looked up and saw the creeper crawling quickly towards me. No time to think. On pure instinct, I pulled out my bow and fired. Boom! The creeper exploded, taking out a portion of the cavern. Lucky for me, thanks to the quick reflexes, I was out of the blast zone. From days 67 to 70, I traveled for two days all the way out to the desert. It was a really tough journey, but by the end, I finally saw the camp. Yes. It was a cabin surrounded by campfires, with a ghostly figure floating around it. It looked like the ghost of an ancient warrior. Lochnar the Necromancer must be able to raise skeletons, zombies, and ghosts. Wait, ghost of ancient warrior? That must be G-O-A-W, the one who wrote the note. He must be a pretty big deal. As I got close, I noticed there was a gorge in the desert just outside the camp. Better not fall in. I drew my bow and fired at the ghost, but predictably, the arrow went straight through him. That's when he threw through the air and lunged at me. He didn't even talk, he was all action. I managed to dodge and strike back with my sword, but he parried. This guy was a better fighter than anyone I'd ever faced. I didn't even know if I could defeat him. That's when I had an idea. If I'm not strong enough to beat him yet, I can still trick him. Before he could attack me again, I quickly drank my potion of slow falling. Then, when he attacked me again, I jumped back and fell into the gorge. To him, it looked like I fell to my doom, but thanks to the potion, I was just fine. When the ghost finally floated away, I climbed back up to the top. Kyther of Light, here I come! On days 71 to 74, I was finally able to make my way into the cabin being guarded by the ghost of the ancient warrior. Except, the Kyther wasn't there. The cabin was empty. All I heard was the echoing laughter of Lochnar the Necromancer. He was always a few steps ahead. Once again, it all been for nothing. I made the long trek back to my damaged base, empty-handed. On days 75 to 78, I came back to the base and noticed how damaged it really was. It was still heavily damaged from the creeper assault, and I needed to start the repairs immediately, so I did just that. I felt terrible knowing that now Mr. Baboon is gone, I didn't need to rebuild the treehouse. As I finished up the repairs, the fire villager approached me. Hey Zozo, I just wanted to say I'm sorry you didn't find the Kyther, but I know you're strong enough to beat Lochnar anyway. I figured this might help. That's when he handed me a diamond sword with fire aspect, the strongest weapon I'd ever had my hands on. Wow, thanks fire villager! It may not be the Kyther of Light, but it's the next best thing. And it turns out that the diamond sword couldn't have come at a better time, because suddenly, the ghost of the ancient warrior had returned, and he was flying at me. Guess it's time for a rematch. But this time, I didn't need any cheap tricks to take him down. Using my new diamond sword, I dodged his blows and struck him again and again, until he burst into ghost vapor and disappeared. 
I immediately started growing larger and larger, as well as doubling my hearts. But it wasn't just that. With my new size, I gained Godzilla strength, making all my close-range attacks three times as powerful. Just then, the fire villager ran up to me. You did it, Zozo! You defeated the ghost of the ancient warrior! That's amazing! Wait, Zozo, I found this where the ghost vaporized. Huh? It looks like a notebook. The latest note read, Lochnar is nearly at his full power. The final arrangements are being put into place. Destroy Zozo and the Druid. Wait, the Druid from the cabin? He's involved in this too? On day 79 to 84, I knocked on the door of the Druid's cabin to find out how he was involved in all of this. Just like when I first met him, he wasn't eager to have me as a visitor. Keep your distance, Fire Godzilla. You're even bigger than last time, and my house is very flammable. I don't want to burn your house down, Druid, but I know someone who does. I've seen instructions from Lochnar the Necromancer. He wants to destroy me and you. What does he have against you? Ugh, Lochnar again? I thought I was done with that guy. What do you mean? I defeated him a few hundred years ago and sealed him away. I figured he'd stay gone for good, but I guess not. Wait, does that mean you're the legendary hero? I was, sure, but then I retired to become a druid. It's a much easier life. And besides, you should be fine. As long as you have the Kaithar, he won't be that hard to defeat. But he has the Kaithar. Oh, oh, okay. This could be bad. After our conversation, the druid led me back out into the forest to find another nether portal. He'd hid another weapon in the nether all those years ago as backup, if ever the Kaithar fell into the wrong hands. But when we arrived at the side of the portal, it had already been destroyed. This isn't good. If Lochnar destroyed the nether portal, it means he doesn't need it anymore. He's reaching the full height of his powers. What do we do now? Well, from where I'm standing, the only option is to- An arrow shot out of the woods, hitting the druid and destroying him before he could even finish his sentence. No, this can't be happening. I turned to see a small gang of skeletons emerge out of the thicket behind us. As they ran at me, I made short work of them with my diamond fire sword. But now, I was out of options and out of time. There was only one thing left to do. I need to find the Swamp of Vileness and destroy Lochnar myself. On days 85 to 89, I made my way out to the snowy landscapes of the north, where I finally found the great beast I'd met back in the nether. As far as I could tell, he would be the only one who could tell me where to find the Swamp of Vileness and finally track down Lochnar the Necromancer himself. I know where to find it, but it won't be easy. It's beyond the forest, but you can only go at night. And that's the thing, that creep is strongest at night. So if you're gonna take him on, you better be well defended. That's a useful tip. Thanks, Great Beast. From days 90 to 94, I decided to take the Great Beast's advice and armor up. I used my iron pickaxe to mine some diamonds and turned them into a full set of diamond armor, helmet, chest plate, leggings, and boots. But I didn't want to stop there. I needed some enchantments to really make sure I could take a punch from Lochnar and his evil army of the undead. I gave myself the protection enchantment. That makes my armor twice as durable against close range attacks and projectile protection, which kept me safe from ranged attacks. Let's see Lochnar take me on now. From days 95 to 97, I finally finished the statue. Its flame could be seen from miles away and should keep all the bad mobs away from my base once and for all. It was a beacon of hope for all fire mobs, a bright, brilliant beacon that could be seen from miles away. And that's when I realized why I had to take on Lochnar and his undead minions. I could either use my fire powers to destroy, like when I accidentally burned down Mr. Baboon's tree, or I could use it to be a beacon of hope, to fight back against evil whenever I can, because it's the right thing to do. So it's exactly what I was going to do. On day 98, I spoke to the fire villager in Blaze about my plan to attack the Swamp of Vileness and finally take down Lochnar. You can't do this alone, Zozo. You're strong, but Lochnar is so powerful, and he has an entire army. He's right, Zozo. Why don't you let us come with you? Surely we'll be stronger together. I can't put you at risk like that. You need to stay here as backup in case Lochnar defeats me and his undead army escapes. But I can't let that happen. Trust me, no matter what, I'm going to defeat Lochnar and put an end to his evil reign of terror. With that, I exited the base, but was suddenly stopped by someone I haven't met before. Uh, can I help you? He said nothing and dropped me a note and left. The note said, if you want to help me defeat Lochnar, you should subscribe to Zozo and check out our other adventures. You can even suggest what you want to see next down in the comments. Hmm, all right. I'm sure with the help of you guys, I'll actually manage to defeat Lochnar. On day 99, following the instructions of the Great Beast, I made my way to the Swamp of Vileness in the dead of night. It was every bit as creepy as I'd imagined. 
Mist hung low. The mossy skeletons, minions of Lochnar, were patrolling back and forth. I didn't have any more potions of invisibility. I needed to fight my way through. Okay, skellies, come get me. I want to speak to your manager. That got their attention. Suddenly, waves of mossy skeletons started running at me, while others fired bows at me from a distance. Thankfully, with my enchanted diamond armor, I could deflect most of the damage, and my enchanted diamond sword could destroy them in one strike each. But that wasn't the problem. The mossy skeletons may have been weak, but every single time I defeated them, more just kept coming out of the fog. Don't you guys know when to quit? They are the least of your worries, Sozo. It was Lochnar. I could hear his voice, but I couldn't see him. It was like he was everywhere around me. If you survive this onslaught, come a little further and meet me in my crypt. It'll be the last thing you ever do. I wasn't going to let him get away with that. No matter how many skeletons he threw at me, I'd keep fighting to the very end. With my sword at the ready and my flames brighter than ever, I moved in towards the crypt of Lochnar. On day 100, I fought through the mossy skeletons and reached the crypt, which looked like a big, rickety pile of ancient stone. But there were stronger enemies waiting for me there. Mutant skeletons and mutant zombies came running at me, but my sword was ready. I hit them again and again, sending one after another down. But just like the mossy skeletons, more of them kept coming. I'm really starting to get sick of you guys. I unleashed a mighty Fire Godzilla roar that could be heard across all of the Swamp of Vileness and it knocked out all of the undead at once. It was just me in the crypt, so I pulled out my iron pickaxe and started destroying it, just to spite Lochnar. But just then, I fell down deeper into the crypt. Oh my gosh, there it is! That's the Kyther of Light! This is where he's been keeping it! I grabbed the Kyther. Now, I was ready to take on Lochnar! I wouldn't be so confident, Zozo. Boom! Lochnar appeared behind me, more powerful than he'd ever been before. Do you really think you can beat this? Lochnar began to grow as his power increased, becoming a huge, monstrous super necromancer. Like this, he really did look like he could take over the world. But I wasn't done yet. And do you really think you can beat this? I summoned up all of my power and channeled it. My flames got brighter as I grew, taking in the power of the Kyther of Light. I became Ultra Fire Godzilla, with 30 hearts and almost unbreakable armor. You can't do this. It isn't fair. Life isn't fair, Lochnar. Let's go. Lochnar threw everything at me, hitting me again and again, but getting nothing. Now it's my turn. With one mighty swing of the Kyther, with all my power behind it, Lochnar was destroyed once and for all, never to raise another undead minion again. Safe at last, I returned to the base to celebrate with the Fire Villager and Blaze. Things were finally looking up for all of us. On day one, I spawned in as a noob dragon, with a gang of angry villagers surrounding me! Hey look, another dragon! We better get that nasty beast before it gets us! What? Mister, I just got here! I don't want to get anyone! More draconic lies! You're not gonna pull one over on us! Let's get him, boys! The gang of villagers all started to chase me across the valley. I didn't understand why they were so angry at me. I was just a baby noob dragon. I only had five hearts. Luckily, I was still pretty fast for being a scaly noob, and I managed to outrun them, reaching the Aspen Forest and leaving all those villagers to eat my dust. With them gone, for now at least, I took a moment to rest amongst the trees and catch my breath. Oi, these guys sure know how to roll out the welcome wagon. I have no idea why dragons have such a terrible reputation around here. And I didn't get much pondering time. Before I could pick myself back up and run off, I was surrounded by those same villagers again. They caught up with me and emerged from between the trees, completely surrounding me. Tag him and bag him, boys. One less dragon out here makes our villages just that little bit safer. On day two, after the villagers captured me, they took me straight to dragon jail and threw me into my cell. They didn't even take time to hear me out. What about due process? Don't I have a right to a trial? Those are human rights, noob dragon. And you're not human. Darn it! At least I wasn't alone in my cell. There was also a bored-looking Komodo dragon lounging around. I was happy to have someone in the same boat that I could talk to. Hey, I'm Zozo. All those villagers captured me pretty much as soon as I arrived, just because I'm a dragon. I don't understand. Nice to meet you, Zozo. I'm Carl, Komodo Carl. I've given up on trying to understand why the humans do what they do. I'm not even a real dragon. 
I'm just a Komodo dragon. I can't even breathe fire. Breathe fire? Wait, Carl, you're a genius! I am? I mean, uh, thank you. I'm happy to finally have my genius recognized. I turned to the door of my cell, summoned up all of my might, and blasted a fireball at the door. It wasn't all that powerful, but it was powerful enough to at least set us free. Let's go, Carl, before the villagers realize we're gone. You don't have to tell me twice, buddy. Carl and I ran out of there, going our separate ways. Now we both at least had a fighting chance out here. On day three, after escaping from the dragon jail, I fled to somewhere that the villagers would have a lot harder time finding me, the Black Forest. By the time I'd gone deep enough into the forest to feel safe from the villagers, I was so hungry I could barely stand it. I guess using my fireball power and then making a daring escape really works up an appetite. There wasn't a huge amount of food around, but I at least gathered up as many sweet berries as I could, eating some and storing the rest away for safekeeping. Suddenly, a huge shadow passed over. I looked up and saw something amazing. It was a huge, fully grown ender dragon soaring right above me. When she spotted me, she turned herself towards me. I looked so tiny compared to her. Hello, little one. I didn't expect to see another dragon down here, even a teeny tiny noob dragon such as yourself. Hi, Miss Ender Dragon. My name's Zozo, and I'm pretty surprised to see you too. People aren't very kind to us dragons around here. Ah, so you've encountered all the cruel, small-minded humans who are out here threatening to ruin our way of life. You're lucky you escaped with your life. Wait, you know about all of that? Please tell me more. I'd love to understand everything that's going on here. You'll understand it all in due time. Fly with me, little one, and I'll take you back to my lair. So me and the Ender Dragon used our dragon wings to take off into the sky. At least it'd be a lot harder for humans to get us up there. From day four to day five, I flew with the Ender Dragon all the way back to her draconic lair in the wooded Red Rock Mountains. As we flew over, I noticed that there was an unusual number of Endermen wandering around the mountain. I figured they must have been there with the Ender Dragon. We touched down near the top of the mountain, and that's when the Ender Dragon started telling me her story. You see, Zozo, we dragons once ruled this whole world. The natural home of all dragons is the end, but the end isn't a very vibrant place. Instead, we dragons came here and helped lift up this world to greatness. But some creatures, especially the humans, were ungrateful for everything we did for them. They decided instead to hate us and hunt us to near extinction just because we're the rightful rulers of this world. That sounds horrible. What can I do to make it all right again, Miss Ender Dragon? We must reclaim our territory, piece by piece, Zozo. You can start by finding a good place to build a base. Here, take these tools. The Ender Dragon gave me a set of stone tools and I flew off again. I searched from the skies until I came across a Guianya shield biome. This seems like a good place to hang my hat. I flew down and started using my stone axe to clear trees and make space for my base. This also gave me enough wood to make a decent start on actually building it too. I took a break from my building to appreciate the scenery when I saw a gang of villagers wandering through the forest searching for me. I swear I saw a dragon fly through the sky around here. We need to find it before it does any damage. But this time, I wasn't going to settle for being captured. I blew another fireball and it exploded right next to them. They scattered immediately after that. Then I leveled up thanks to me using my dragon skills. I had 10 hearts now and I'd gotten bigger. Not as much of a noob now, am I? From day six to day eight, I was exploring more of the Guianya shield when I happened upon a sad looking raccoon wandering through. Hey raccoon, is everything okay? You look a little glum. Of course I look glum. My home just burnt down. I'm the only one who got out. Oh no, that's terrible. I'm so sorry. What happened? Was someone being careless with matches? No, no, someone else did it or something. And I know I'm not the only one. There are a lot of incidents like this. Some places getting burned. Some folks are getting poisoned. You better be careful out there. And with that, the raccoon wandered off. I knew even more now that something horrible was going on out here. But was it something I could fix in less than 100 days? The day after, the Ender Dragon returned, floating in the sky. She had some things to say to me. Zozo, I'm afraid I have grave news. The humans are working together with some of the other creatures to wipe us dragons out completely. 
We need to find and crush their resistance movement completely. But where would we start, Ender Dragon? I need information first and foremost. Make your way to the Jacaranda Forest. I believe there may be some people of interest there. Find out all that you can. And while you're there, if you can find an old chest of mine, I left an echo locator inside. It'll help you find caves. Without any delay, I set off to the Jacaranda Forest. From day 9 to day 10, I flew away from my base and made my way towards the Jacaranda Forest, hoping to find some information and, if I was lucky, the Ender Dragon's old chest. I landed in the forest and started searching. Thankfully, it didn't actually take me long to find the chest that the Ender Dragon told me about. Plus, thankfully, there was an angry Crimson Phantom guarding it. The owner of this chest told me I could have what was inside it, sir. Oh yeah? Well, I don't care. It's my chest now, and if you want it back, you're gonna have to fight me for it. The fight began, and because I was still technically a real noob dragon, the Crimson Phantom was stronger than me. His attacks were powerful, and he seemed to be good at tanking mine. I pulled out of the fight and tried to collect myself. I was worried the Crimson Phantom was going to attack me, until a Phantom Fox ran in and distracted him from me. Hey Crimson, don't you know why you shouldn't fight with dragons? You'll get burned. This was just the distraction I needed to fire a fireball at the Crimson Phantom, destroying him for good. Thanks for the assist, Phantom Fox. No problem, noob dragon. With the Crimson Phantom gone, I easily searched the chest and grabbed the echolocator. The Phantom Fox was still there, waiting for me. Say, want to come visit my friend, the Elder Guardian? I think he'd like you. Sure, he might be able to help me with some information I need. We traveled deeper into the forest until we came upon the Elder Guardian. All three of us sat down to chat, and I asked the Elder Guardian if he knew anything about the human resistance groups. Resistance groups? Where have you heard of such a thing? I don't know of any resistance groups, just people trying to do their best to survive hard times. Interesting. I'll report back with that. From day 11 to day 12, I flew from the Jacaranda Forest back to the wooded Red Rock Mountains where the Ender Dragon was waiting for me. Well, do you have anything to tell me about the resistance groups? Our continued survival depends on it, Zozo. I spoke to some people, and the funny thing is, nobody seems to know about any resistance groups, just people trying to survive. Fools! All of them fools! Do I have to do everything myself? Gather up some iron from a cave to create some iron armor, then find a remote village to the south of here. You'll see evidence of the human resistance with your own eyes, since you seem to have so little trust in me. I had no idea why the Ender Dragon seemed so mean and angry with me all of a sudden, but I figured I still better do what she said. I flew down from the mountain and used the Echo Locator to find the nearest cave. I headed inside and started mining until I found some iron ore. This would be perfect for armor and tools. But when I left the cave, some angry dread thralls were waiting for me. Can't you guys give me a break? I've been having kind of a rough week. They didn't listen. Instead, they attacked. Luckily for me, it was easy to make short work of them with my fire breath attack. Now I need to go find that remote village. From day 13 to day 15, after searching for a couple of days, I found the remote village that the Ender Dragon told me about. But it seemed so peaceful. It was a small, isolated community guarded by a single iron golem. They didn't even seem bothered by me being there, like the villagers that had first imprisoned me. A lot of what the Ender Dragon told me doesn't seem to add up. Something's wrong. I need to get out of here and find out the truth. From day 16 to day 19, I flew back to the wooded Red Rock Mountains to get some straight answers out of the Ender Dragon, only to find that she wasn't there. This whole situation just keeps getting weirder and weirder. I'm starting to get a little worried, honestly. I flew back to my base, turning this whole thing over in my mind, when I noticed someone was already at my base, waiting for me. It was one of the villagers from that little remote village that the Ender Dragon made me stake out. Oh gosh, I hope you're a nice dragon, because that evil Ender Dragon is attacking my village, and I need some help. Wait, the Ender Dragon? Oh no, don't worry, I'll go over there right away. I flew back to the remote village and saw, to my horror, that the villager was right. The Ender Dragon was flying above, destroying everything. I flew in and tried to reason with her. Ender Dragon, why are you doing this? These people aren't part of the resistance. You gullible fool! You barely deserve to call yourself a dragon! There is no resistance! There are only we dragons and all inferior species! 
You can either be with me or against me. I'm not going to let you hurt innocent people, Ender Dragon. Then you're against me. The Ender Dragon blew one of her poisonous purple fireballs at me, and everything went black. From day 20 to day 22, I woke up from being knocked out and found that the Ender Dragon was gone. But she'd also destroyed the entire village and left no survivors. Except for one Iron Golem, who was left without anything to defend. I feel terrible. It was my duty to defend them, and now they're all gone because of me. It isn't your fault, Iron Golem. It was the Ender Dragon's fault. Come back to my base with me. We'll work together to defeat the Ender Dragon and avenge everyone she hurt. Yes, that sounds like the only way that I can bring my heart some peace. The Iron Golem and I went back to my base. I let him stay in my house and made sure he was happy here. Thank you, Zozo. This looks like a wonderful place to stay. And while I was there, I built a smelting furnace where I turned my iron ore into iron ingots, built a few new pieces of armor, and an iron pickaxe. I'm going to use all my might to become an experienced dragon and take down the ender dragon for all she's done! From day 23 to day 26, I decided to take my new iron gear out for a spin. If I was going to become a mighty enough dragon to defeat the ender dragon, I needed to get to work and explore some new areas. I ventured out to the desert and started looking around. Then I spotted a Vex Piglin attacking a Komodo dragon. Wait a second, I know that Komodo dragon. Komodo Carl, I'll save you. Zozo, thank goodness, I thought I was a goner. I rushed over and started attacking the Vex Piglin, but it was really strong. Yikes, this is gonna be a harder fight than I thought. The Vex Piglin knocked me down. Oh no, Zozo, look out. Carl, I can't defeat this guy by myself. I need you to help me. How can I help? I'm just a Komodo dragon. You're the real deal. I couldn't even free myself without your help. Just trust me. If we work together, we'll be much stronger than we are by ourselves. I'll give it my best shot. Komodo Carl jumped in and attacked the Vex Piglin while I was down, attacking him and saving my life. Thanks for your help. See, I knew you were stronger than you thought you were. Thank you for showing me that and helping me save myself. Hey, let me give you something to say thanks. He gave me a Komodo Dragon spit bottle. Oh, uh, thanks, I guess. I know it seems gross, but you can use this to make a potion resistance potion. It should help protect you. Oh, cool, thanks. From day 27 to day 31, I took a stroll through the beautiful rose fields to catch my breath after that fight with the Vex Piglin. Seeing all those flowers definitely put me in a good mood. While I was stopping to smell the roses, I saw a herd of sheep. They were wandering around and looked pretty lost, so I told them to follow me back to my base. Once we got there, I built a pen for the sheep to live in. Here you go, you guys can stay here as long as you like. Oh, Zozo, you're back. I'm so glad. I wanted to show you what I did while you were gone. The Iron Golem showed me some bookshelves he added to the base. Awesome, thanks. Meanwhile, in the wooded Red Rock Mountains, the Ender Dragon was up to no good, with a frightening Ender Blaze standing by her side. I'm so glad you see things my way, Ender Blaze. With your help, no one will dare oppose me ever again. My pleasure. We Ender Beings should be in charge of everything. And if you're the one who's gonna make that happen, I'll do anything I can to help. From day 32 to day 35, I left my base to go explore the enchanted forest. I was just taking a casual stroll and looking around when suddenly a group of warped Moscos spotted me. Oh no, a dragon! Quick, let's get him before he burns down our forest! They rushed toward me and started attacking me. Hey, wait, I'm not here to burn anything down. I live in this forest too. That's what the dragon in our last forest said, but he was a liar. I bet you are too. Wait a second, the Ender Dragon, she lied to me too. It's my mission to defeat her so she can't hurt anyone else. Really? You promise? I promise. My name is Zozo and I'm a nice dragon. If that's really true, then you should come with us. I followed them to a warped toad who was sitting under a tree. Well, I certainly didn't expect you boys to bring me a dragon. I'm here to help, I swear. My name is Zozo. I don't like the Ender Dragon any more than you do. Well, as the old saying goes, fight fire with fire. 
Having a dragon on our side might be the advantage we need to end the Ender Dragon's reign of terror. The Ender Dragon isn't used to battling his own kind, you see. She's tricked most of them into working with her. I'll tell you anything else that I learn and help you however I can, Zozo. From day 36 to day 39, I decided to work on upgrading my armor. I went down into the mine and started digging for iron. I found enough to craft the rest of the armor I needed, and I even found a couple of diamonds too. I gathered everything and took it back to my base. I used the iron I mined to complete the rest of my set, and when I was finished, I saw a raccoon at the entrance to the base. Hey, are you Zozo? That's me. Oh, good. I heard you're trying to learn more about being a dragon, so you can get strong enough to stop the Ender Dragon, right? I am. Are you here to give me dragon lessons or something? Nah, I'm just a raccoon. I could teach you how to find food in the trash, but I think you'd rather talk to my friend. She's a lightning dragon, and she's not too fond of the Ender Dragon either. If you're not busy, you can come with me to meet her. I'm never too busy to learn. Let's go. From day 40 to day 43, I followed the raccoon to the Aracaria savanna. She's really excited to meet you. Oh jeez, but I'm just a noob dragon. I'm still learning. Yeah, but you were brave enough to stand up to the ender dragon. That's a big deal. Here she is. I saw a huge, tough lightning dragon sunning herself in the middle of the savanna. It sure was a sight to see. You must be Zozo. I'm so happy to meet you. I know you're looking to get stronger and learn more about being a dragon. I've been a dragon for a pretty long time, so I hope I can help. That would be awesome! Can you help me get better at breathing fire? Before she could answer, an ender blaze jumped out from behind a tree and landed right in front of us. Well, 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 look what I found. A couple of traders working together. Who the heck are you? I'm the guy that's gonna teach you a lesson about opposing the ender dragon. The Ender Blaze fired a missile at me, and I just barely managed to dodge it. Help! The Lightning Dragon gave me some of her power to fight the Ender Blaze. I felt myself get bigger and stronger too, but just when we thought we defeated him, he kept attacking. You've done a great job here today, Zozo, but you need to get out of here. I'll keep this guy busy. Go! From day 44 to day 49, I flew back to my base. I hope the Lightning Dragon is okay. I didn't have too much time to think about it though, because the warped toad came to see me. Zozo, I have some news. My research has pointed me to a weapon that I believe will help you defeat the Ender Dragon. It is a netherite axe, a powerful axe made by combining a diamond axe with netherite ingots. Oh, I have some diamonds already. Excellent. And you have the amount of diamonds required to craft a diamond axe? Well, no, I need to go get more diamonds. Then hop to it, young dragon. Time is of the essence. I get it. Hop like a toad. Very funny. This is no laughing matter, Zozo. Much is at stake. Good luck. On the encouragement of the warped toad, I headed down into the mine and started digging for diamonds. Phew, all this mining is hard work, but it'll be worth it when I finally defeat the Ender Dragon. It took a while, but I found some diamonds, enough to make a diamond axe. Now I just need to figure out where I can find a netherite ingot. From day 50 to day 53, I started my quest to find some netherite ingots and build the netherite axe. I ventured out to the crag gardens to see what I could learn. When I got there, a cleric came up to me. Greetings, little dragon. Are you a friend of the warped toad? I am. What can you tell me about a netherite axe? Well, the Ender Dragon is vulnerable to netherite weapons, according to stories I have heard. She isn't able to melt them with her fiery breath the way she would ordinary metal weapons. The combination of diamond and netherite makes it indestructible to her. That's great news! Do you know where I can find some netherite? Now that I'm afraid I don't know. I wish you luck though. Okay, well thanks for the info. I started to head back to my base. As I was walking, a fireball hit the ground just a few feet away from me. Hey, what gives? I could see a fire dragon just up ahead. I'm so sorry. I wasn't aiming for you. I was aiming for those zombies. Sure enough, he was fighting a horde of zombies. Want some help with that? Yeah, I've got this. He shot another fireball out of his mouth and blew up the rest of the zombies without any trouble at all. Whoa, that was awesome! Say, do you want to team up with me and help me fight the Ender Dragon? No thanks, I'm good. Sorry kid, but I fly solo. Good luck with uh, whatever you're doing though. Sounds like you're gonna need it. 
From day 54 to day 57, I explored the Crag Garden some more. If I were some netherite, where would I be? Just as I was searching, the Enderblaze popped up behind me again. I don't know about netherite, but it looks like there's plenty of loserite here. Because you are a loser, you tiny noob dragon. Ah, oh, the Enderblaze is back! I drew my weapon and got ready for a fight, but he was still way bigger and stronger than me. Oh no, I can't beat him yet. And you never will. All hail the Ender Dragon. May her fire cleanse the land of all weakness. I didn't have any choice but to run away as fast as I could. Next time I see that guy, I'll be ready. Meanwhile, back in the wooded Red Rock Mountains, the Ender Dragon was floating back and forth. It's all coming together marvelously. Soon there will be only dragons and those who serve us. Any of my kind that refuse to join me will be dealt with swiftly. All else will be burned to ash or reduced to nothing but dust. <laughs> From day 58 to day 62, I went back to my base to check things out and figure out my next step. When I got there, I noticed something was different. There were walls. Wow, this looks great. The iron golem stepped forward. Glad you think so. My mother always taught me that a good house guest helps out however they can. And I had some spare time, so I built some bigger walls. Thank you. I still think the base needs something else, though. Maybe something decorative? Yeah, like a statue. I know. I'll build a statue of an adult dragon to remind myself what I'm working toward. When I look like the statue, I'll know I'm done growing up. I gathered some materials and started constructing my adult dragon statue. Then I added some banners to the base to spruce up the place even more. Next, I used my diamonds to craft myself a diamond axe. What a great day! I'm one step closer to having what I need to defeat the ender dragon. I just have to stay brave and keep going. From day 63 to day 66, the cleric came to visit me at my base. Zozo, the time has come for you to gather the remaining materials for the netherite axe. In order to find netherite, you must enter the nether. Okay, um, how do I do that? Through a portal, dear dragon. There is one I can lead you to, and once it is operational, you will be able to travel through it to the nether. Oh, okay, neat. Follow me, Zozo. I followed the cleric out to the snowy blue taiga. This is where the portal is. Unfortunately, it appears to be broken. You will not be able to pass through it until it has been repaired. Ah, oh, bummer. How do we fix it? That I cannot tell you. I will return to my research and see what I can learn. In the meantime, explore this area and see if you can unlock the secrets of the portal for yourself. I never could have dreamed becoming an adult dragon would be so much work, but I was ready for the challenge. If I needed a working portal to help me complete my quest, I would find a way to make it work. From day 67 to day 70, I wandered around the snowy blue taiga, looking for clues that might help me fix the broken portal. Zozo, is that you, buddy? Oh, hey, Komodo Carl, what brings you all the way out here? I came out here to visit some friends, but I ran into an ice dragon causing all kinds of trouble, freezing my vacation house. Oh no, let's go see if we can stop it. I followed Komodo Carl to his vacation home, and sure enough, there was a great big ice dragon stomping all over the place. Hey, what are you doing? Cut that out. You, you work for that infernal ender dragon. You can't tell me what to do. I don't work for her anymore. A likely story. Ice to meet you, little dragon. Prepare to be frozen in your tracks. Then the ice dragon rushed at me and attacked. I had gotten a lot stronger and better at fighting, though, and I was able to defeat him and knock him down. Please, listen to me. I don't work for the ender dragon anymore. In fact, I'm trying to stop her, but I need help to do it. If you join me, maybe we can stop her once and for all. That would be more productive than taking out my rage on this random vacation home. You know what? I will join you. From day 71 to day 74, I returned to my base and found the Enderblaze had beaten me to it. He was launching fireballs at everything in sight and had already knocked down one of the walls completely. Uh -oh. No, stop that. If you want me to stop so badly, you'll have to fight me. What if I'm not strong enough? I guess I'll have to try anyway. I attacked the Enderblaze, but he knocked me down. He's still too strong. What do I do? Perish. <laughs> he attacked me, but I dodged it. Get away from our base, you fiend. The Iron Golem attacked the Enderblaze, but the Enderblaze grabbed him. I'll take this. 
Smell you later, foolish baby dragon. The two of them teleported away in the blink of an eye. He'd kidnapped my friend. No! That was too far. I needed to get strong enough to beat the Enderblaze so I could save the Iron Golem who had helped me so much. I won't let you down, Iron Golem, no matter what. I can promise you that much. First, I had to repair the damage to my base. I rebuilt the busted wall and added a guard tower and a fence for extra protection in case Ender Dragon sent any more minions to attack me. Looking at my hard work, I couldn't help but feel regret for not putting in all these security features earlier. Meanwhile, back in the Red Rock Mountains. Excellent work, Ender Blaze. Without his little friend to help him, Zozo stands no chance. Not that he had one to begin with. There is none mightier than the Ender Dragon in all the land. And soon, everyone will bow down to me. From day 75 to day 78, the Warped Toad came to see me at my base. Zozo, I heard about what happened. I'm so sorry, little one. But all hope is not lost. I know, I just have to work harder. And you just need the right equipment. I'm sure you know by now that diamond weapons are more effective against the Ender Dragon, but they're also most effective against his Ender Blaze as well. I brought you this, and it should help you in your quest. He handed me a diamond sword. Thank you. Do you know where the Ender Blaze might have taken my friend? Yes, that was my second gift. You didn't give me a chance to show you. Anyway, here it is. Take this map, and it will lead you there. You've come a long way already, Zozo. I know you can do it. Thank you. Armed with the map and my new diamond sword, I headed off to confront the Enderblaze for what I hoped would be the last time. From day 79 to day 84, I followed the map to the Enderblaze's base. Give me back my friend, you monster. He came out of the base to face me. I could see the iron golem trapped behind him. Oh, I'm a monster, am I? And you aren't? For betraying the Ender Dragon, who took you under her wing and taught you what it means to be a dragon? Being a dragon isn't about hurting innocent people and being a bully. She's a liar! And you're a loser. Please, feel free to fight me again if you're so eager to taste defeat once more. I drew my sword and attacked as fast as I could. He blocked my attack with ease, and I started to get worried. Oh no, is this new sword enough to defeat him? Of course it's not! He hit me hard, knocking me down. It was looking like things might be over for me, when suddenly the ice dragon slammed into the Ender Blaze. Not so fast. I thought you only worked alone. I usually do, but I'm not gonna let the Ender Dragon ruin everything for our kind. Let's teach this guy a lesson. Here, take this. He tossed me a dragon enhancement potion, which I drank quickly. Ugh, tastes gross. Even though it didn't taste good, the potion made me transform into a full-grown adult dragon. And I gained hearts. Not such a little dragon anymore. Now, let's handle this Ender Blaze. With the Ice Dragon's help and my brand new strength and size, we were finally able to defeat him and free the Iron Golem. From day 85 to day 89, I headed out to the Badlands to collect some terracotta I could use to finish off my statue. It was perfect timing, finishing the statue of an adult dragon when I was finally one myself. I returned to my base and put the finishing touches on the statue. That looks great! Then the cleric came back to see me. Zozo, I have great news! I know how you can fix the nether portal. Take these obsidian blocks and use them to repair it. Then you can go through and collect the netherite you require. Awesome, thank you so much. I took the obsidian blocks and ventured back out to the snowy blue taiga where the broken portal was waiting for me. I used the blocks to fix the portal and then I was ready to enter the nether. Wow, this place is kind of spooky. I looked around for a while and I saw some ancient debris. Oh, that's it. If I get that ancient debris, I can get some netherite. But as I ran toward the ancient debris, an ender gas jumped out and attacked me. I don't have time for this. Get out of my way. With my new strength and size, it was easy to blow that ender gas away. Then I grabbed the ancient debris and headed back through the portal. Now I have everything I need. From day 90 to day 94, I emerged from the portal and was back in the snowy blue taiga. But my good mood didn't last long because the ender dragon was waiting for me. Hello again, Zozo. You've grown, I see. Not a noob dragon any longer. You're a mighty beast now. Join me, come and work for me again. And together, we will conquer this puny land. No, I'll never join you. 
fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, well, you're just mean. If that is your choice, then so be it. Hey, what's that behind you? When I turned to look, she snatched the ancient debris out of my hands. Hey, give that back. No, I don't think I will. I'll give you something to keep you busy, though. As she got ready to fly away, she dropped a cage on me. I was trapped. From day 95 to day 97, I used my fiery breath to destroy the cage so I could escape. Yay, I'm out. But now what should I do? I know, I'll go see the warped toad and ask him what to do. I traveled to the enchanted forest and tracked down the warped toad. When I arrived, he was lying on the ground, dying. Who did this to you? The Ender Dragon. She attacked me. I don't have much time. Listen to me. She's taken what she stole from you back to her base. You'll have to go there and retrieve it. Thank you for your heroism, Zozo. Goodbye. No! I'll make her pay for this, I swear! On day 98, I returned to my base and was greeted by a horrible sight. My base was completely destroyed while I was gone. She must have come here too. Curse her, this is terrible. I looked around for my friends that were living there, but they were gone. Oh no, what do I do? My base, my leader, my friends. She took everything from me. Not everything. I turned around and the ice dragon was there. I'm sorry you're sad, Zozo, but I can help. If the two of us team up, I think we can take down the Ender Dragon together. What should we do? We'll gather up our weapons and supplies and we'll head to a base together. Then we'll fight as hard as we can. Okay, let's do it. On day 99, the Ice Dragon and I journeyed into the wooded Red Rock Mountains where the Ender Dragon's base was. Ready? Not really, but I don't have much of a choice. Let's give it our best shot. Hello, traitors. Come to grovel at my claws. The Ender Dragon rushed us both. No, we're here to take you down. Ha, funny joke, but I'm finished laughing. Time to taste defeat. Time for you to freeze. The Ice Dragon attacked the Ender Dragon, but she dodged the attack and came back with an even harder hit. She knocked the Ice Dragon down and he didn't get back up. No! I attacked next, but the Ender Dragon was still way too strong. I did get one good hit in though, and she dropped the ancient debris. With no other choice, I grabbed it and ran all the way back to my base. There, I was finally able to craft the netherite axe. When I did, I felt the strength coursing through my body. And when I looked up, the ice dragon and lightning dragon were back. You're alive. Sure am, and I'm ready for round two. On day 100, the dragons and I returned to the Ender Dragon's base. We can't let this lady keep giving dragons a bad name. Let's show her what it really means to be a dragon. All together, we attacked the base. The Lightning Dragon and the Ice Dragon worked together to fight off her minions while I went inside to find the Ender Dragon. Your days of stepping on the little guy are done. Ready to lose again so soon? If you're so eager, then let's fight. Well, I've got this now. I pulled out the netherite axe and she actually looked a little bit scared. How did you get that? With a lot of help, because unlike you, I believe in kindness and friendship and kicking your butt. I ran at her with the axe and started fighting. This time, I knew I was strong enough. Before long, I delivered the final blow and the ender dragon fell to the ground. Finally, there can be peace between dragons and the rest of the world. On day one, I spawned into the middle of the Black Forest as Herobrine, Minecraft's spookiest phantom. Well, a baby version of Herobrine anyway. But why am I here? I was on some kind of altar with a sinister robed figure standing and staring at me. Yes, yes, my plan worked. This is the growing sign that my powers are growing. Plan? Powers? Who are you? And what's going on here? You don't know the name of your master, boy. I am Dorian, the drowned necromancer, master of the undead, and you are my servant. Servant? I didn't sign up for that. I don't even want to be a ghost. I want to have a body. What you want doesn't matter. Without me, you wouldn't exist. And unless I choose to give you a body in the next 100 days, your spirit will fade away into nothingness. Bow to me, boy. Never, and my name is Zozo. 
With all my might, I jumped out of the altar and ran off into the forest as fast as I could. I didn't want anything to do with Dorian the Drowned Necromancer and his plan to get more power. I need to work on my plan, getting my body back. When I was convinced that I'd lost Dorian, I hid under a tree for the rest of the day. As a restless spirit, I couldn't even get any rest. Being here a bride sure isn't easy. On day two, I decided to further explore the Black Forest. It was dark and spooky, the exact kind of place that a scary spirit like me would be summoned. If I wasn't a ghost myself, I'd be afraid of running into a ghost around here. And, oh geez, I only have five hearts. I thought ghosts were meant to be more durable than this. But I didn't have time to wallow in self-pity for long because a gang of frightening dread liches emerged out of the trees. Why is everyone around here so eerie? We serve our glorious master, Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. He gave us new life, so we owe everything to him. Oh, that's just my luck. And I guess you want to kidnap me and take me back to him for his sinister plans. Huh. We didn't expect you to already know this. I guess it saves us some explanation time at least. In the name of Dorian, we come and dare your soul. The Dread Liches punched me. With no weapons and very low health, I didn't have any hope of fighting back against them. Instead, I turned around and ran as quickly as I could. My soul, my rules. The Black Forest seemed dark and infinite, so at least it wasn't difficult to lose those nasty liches. The downside was that I'd gotten lost myself, and as I wandered through the forest, getting more and more creeped out, I ran into a siren. Ah, oh, another ghost. How exciting. Wait, you can see me? Of course I can see you. I'm a psychic. Sarah the Psychic Siren, General Services. Pleased to meet you. So, you're not going to try to steal my soul like everyone else I've met? Steal your soul? Heck no. I'm a huge supporter of spirits' rights. Come with me, my new ghost friend. I'll introduce you to my boss. Finally having met someone nice, I followed Sarah the Psychic Siren through the trees. On day three, Sarah led me through the forest until we came upon a small cottage. A sign outside read, Psychic Services for All Ghosts. Wow, I had no idea this kind of place existed, Sarah. There are more ghosts in this forest than you think. It's got to be someone's job to take care of them and help them along their way. Suddenly, the front door opened and a geomancer stepped out. Zozo, meet my boss, Jerry the Geomancer. Jerry, I found Zozo here wandering through the black forest like a restless spirit. He needs our help. Is that a fact? It's nice to meet you, Zozo. Tell me, how did you find yourself in this difficult situation? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. I was summoned and bound by this guy called Dorian, the Drowned Necromancer, and he told me that if I didn't serve him, I'd disappear in 100 days. It's got me pretty worried. Eh, it's concerning. I've heard of many cases caused by this Dorian fellow, a truly dangerous customer. I'm gonna put Sarah on your case. She'll come and help you build a base and get situated. And together, we'll get your body back. Thank you, Jerry and Sarah. I'm feeling better already. Let's go, Zozo. With the mission to get my body back decided on, Sarah and I journeyed further into the forest to get started. From day four to day five, Sarah and I explored the black forest until we discovered an area with a nice flat terrain. So Sarah, what do you think we should do first? I'd say cut down a few of these trees. That'll give you some of the wood you need to build a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. Great idea, Sarah. I cut down a tree and made a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. From there, I mined enough stone to also create a stone pickaxe, axe, and a stone sword. It's difficult to hold this stuff, being a ghost, but I'll try my best. That's the spirit, Zozo. I cleared enough space in the forest to start laying down a basic base, collecting some extra wood along the way. It started off with a pretty basic setup, with just a room for me and a room for Sarah. Oh, this is a nice setup, Zozo. I guess living with you technically means we're living in a haunted house. Yeah, I guess so. Say, this is probably a pointless question to ask, but is it possible for ghosts to eat? Because I'm getting really hungry right now. You're in luck, Zozo. I have an enchanted apple that ghosts can eat in my inventory right now. Enjoy! Sarah gave me the apple, and I ate it. Instantly, I felt my power starting to grow. I had 20 hearts now, and I developed a new ghost ability, warping from place to place. This is fascinating, Zozo. I feel so lucky that I'm getting to see it. 
From day six to day eight, I went wandering around the nearby Twilight Valley, looking for more rare enchanted food. As a ghost, my ghostly hunger was really difficult to satisfy, and Sarah didn't know how to enchant more food. It kinda sucks to be a ghost. I still have a lot of the downsides of being human, plus a bunch of new downsides. But while I was wandering around the valley, I heard some commotion and ran in to see what was happening. Maybe I can help someone. In the distance, I saw a Vindicator Chef, one of the most powerful types of chefs in the world, being attacked by a nasty gang of skeleton vanguards. A chef, huh? What a stroke of good luck. I used my new ghost power to warp over there and pulled out my stone sword. With all my focus and determination, I fought all of the skeleton vanguards until none remained. It was only me and the Vindicator Chef. You saved my life, sir. I owe you a great debt. What is your name? I'm Zozo. Zozo, a strong name for a strong hero. I am Victor, Victor the Vindicator Chef. And if you do a favor for me, I will repay your kindness by any means necessary. That sounds like a good deal. What kind of favor would you like me to do? Follow me and I'll show you. I followed Victor the Vindicator Chef deeper into the Twilight Valley, excited to get him on my side. From day nine to day 10, Victor took me to a clearing in the valley where a huge moon skeleton was waiting. Oh geez, that thing is a monster. You want me to defeat a mutant skeleton? I believe in you, Zozo. Seeing you take down all those skeleton vanguards makes me completely confident in your ability to slay this beast. Go forth! Uh, thanks for the vote of confidence, Victor. I steeled myself as best as I could and warped over to the mutant skeleton. It immediately started attacking me, and I started attacking it back. But my attacks were barely doing anything, and its attacks were taking way too many hearts off of me. I gotta get out of here! I warped away from the fight and ran back to Victor, telling him the disappointing news. Oh, well, I'm sure you tried your best nonetheless. I suppose we'll go our separate ways. No, hear me out. I could really use a Vindicator chef back at my base. You're the only type of chef who can cook the type of enchanted food I can eat. How about you stay at my base, and I promise I'll come back and defeat this mutant skeleton when I'm strong enough. That sounds like a good deal to me. Lead the way, dear Zozo. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to the base with Victor the Vindicator Chef. I know it isn't much, but it's home. I'm going to make you a room. Thank you, Zozo. I'll get working on a little something of my own in the meantime. I got to work, gathering up new materials, and started building a new little bungalow for the Vindicator Chef to stay in while crashing at my base. What do you think, Victor? This is a nice little room, Zozo. Thank you. And you can come and see what I made for you, too. Go and check your room. I walked over and saw that Victor had made a high-end kitchen in my base. Perfect for cooking up the kind of enchanted food I could eat. This is amazing, Victor. I'm getting hungry just looking at it. But the kitchen is only one side of the equation, Zozo. I need some good quality ingredients. Perhaps we should build a farm on the base. That's another excellent idea. I decided to build a little enclosure and went out into the black forest where I found a bunch of chickens. It wasn't hard to herd them back to my base. I can taste the eggs and fried chicken already. When I returned to my room to relax, I found that Sarah the Psychic Siren was waiting for me with some new information. I did some research into Dorian the Drowned Necromancer Zozo and found some interesting information. He used to be a flesh and blood necromancer, terrorizing the overworld by raising the undead until one day the people rose up and drowned him in the ocean. Somehow, Dorian returned, and he's been acting on his evil plans ever since. Wow, this guy is really scary. From day 13 to day 15, I returned to Sarah once again and asked her what she thought I should do in order to get my body back. Right now, Zozo, knowledge is power. The more we can find out, the more likely we'll be able to help you get your body back. Head out to the Twilight Valley and see what you can find out. That's an excellent idea, Sarah. I journeyed out into the Twilight Valley, which reminded me of the time that I'd failed to defeat the mutant skeleton. Why is nothing ever easy around here? But my difficulties were only just getting started. One of the dread liches who worked for Dorian the Drowned Necromancer came from behind me, ready to fight me. I serve my glorious master, Dorian the... The Drowned Necromancer, yeah, 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 I get it. Let's just fight. Fine, but the way to take all the fun out of this. I battled the Dreadlich with all my might. He was a formidable opponent, but in the end, I defeated him all the same. 
and that gave me the XP I needed to level up again. I got bigger, stronger, rose up to 40 hearts, and gained a new offensive power, lightning strikes! Finally, some actually cool ghost powers! From day 16 to day 19, I found my way into the wooded badlands, where I continued my search for any useful information that could help me defeat Dorian the Drowned Necromancer and get my body back. During the first couple days of my search through the badlands, I didn't find anything, but on day 19, I happened upon a dusty, old book hidden out of the way. Yay, reading! I love that! But it wasn't just a fun reading experience that would engage my imagination, it was also a book that contained some critical information about Dorian the Drowned Necromancer! It read, Like all cardinal undead, the Drowned Necromancer has a beard of ice. Therefore, he must spend most of his time in the freezing cold, and he has a severe weakness to fire. So that's two useful pieces of information. Dorian has a weakness to fire, and he must be hiding somewhere cold. I can't wait to tell Sarah about this. But my celebration was short-lived, as suddenly a couple of dreadliches ambushed me, trying to get revenge for their friend I defeated back in the Twilight Valley. Thankfully this time, I had the power of ghostly lightning in my hands. I fired some lightning bolts at the dreadliches until they were destroyed. I'm getting my body back no matter what. From day 20 to day 22, I continued through the wooded badlands, feeling strong and confident about all the information I'd found recently. I ran into a nasty gang of hungry spiders and used my new lightning ability to zap them. These spiders are hardly a threat to me now. I decided that now was the perfect time to upgrade my gear, too. I searched until I found an underground cavern and looked around until I found some iron ore. I mined the ore and smelted it into some ingots, creating an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Now I'm stronger than ever! Come to think of it, I have some unfinished business to take care of now. Remembering the debt I owe to Victor the Vindicator Chef, I returned to the Twilight Valley and hunted down that scary mutant skeleton I'd agreed to defeat. When I saw the mutant skeleton, I first unleashed a lightning strike, stunning it. Then I ran in and struck it again and again with my new iron sword, until it was no more! A hero brine always pays his debts. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the base to let Victor the Vindicator Chef know that I had paid my debt to him by defeating the mutant skeleton. I can see that you've gotten strong, just like you promised you would. That's right, and I plan on becoming even stronger, Victor. They'll start calling me Victor too, because I won so many battles. But that's my name, Zozo. Won't that get confusing? True, I guess I'll just stick with Zozo. After my talk with Victor, I went to the underground cavern where I could mine for more iron. With my iron pickaxe, I was able to mine the iron ore in no time. In the same area, I found a treasure chest with a bunch of iron ingots that I could use to craft a full set of iron armor. I'm like a ghostly knight. I went back above and went to see Victor the Vindicator Chef again. He said he had some news to share with me. Zozo, I've made an addition to the base that I think you might really enjoy. He showed me a relaxation room that was perfect for ghosts like me. You did a really good job on this, Victor. We ghosts might not be able to rest in peace, but at least now we can relax about it. It was no trouble at all, friend. From day 27 to day 31, I was out exploring the same area of the wooded badlands where I defeated the dreadliches. I came across a farmer who was jumping for joy at the sight of me. That's not the usual reaction people have for Herobrine, so I went over to ask why he was in such a good mood. What's got you so happy, Mr. Farmer? It's because of you, Zozo. Those dreadliches were a real snake in my boot. But ever since you defeated them, I've had no worries. Glad to hear it. Slaying evil monsters and improving lives is totally my thing. Well, there is one small worry. When those dread liches were still around, one of them scared off all my sheep. I needed them for wool. I'll help you out. You can even come live at my base if you'd like. That sounds pitchy keen, Zozo. I led the farmer back to the base, then set off through the black forest to find some sheep so I could gather the wool that the farmer was looking for. Taming them was easy enough, and soon there was enough wool to go around. Afterwards, I decided to do some decorating. These Herobrine banners will show the mobs that this base is home to one mighty ghost. With the decorations done, I found Sarah the Psychic Siren waiting inside. There you are, Zozo. You have to leave the base with me now. It's an emergency. What's going on? Come on, I'll explain when we get there. 
From day 32 to day 35, I left the base with Sarah and traveled through the Black Forest. Along the way, we were ambushed by a small gang of dread liches. Boy, does this feel familiar. I should have seen this coming. I am a psychic after all. We serve our glorious master, Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. They really do say it every time, don't they, Sarah? They sure do. Hey, don't diss our catchphrase, or we'll have to get mean. Well, meaner. The dread liches began to attack, so I zapped them with my ghost lightning strikes. None of the dread liches I had fought before had seen that ability, so it took them by surprise, and I was able to quickly defeat them. We traveled on, and I soon noticed that Sarah and I had come to the place where Jerry the Geomancer had resided before. This time, it was completely destroyed, and the area was full of Dorian's dread liches. Hey, this is Jerry's place. Get out of here. It looks like we were too late, Sozo. This is exactly what I foresaw in my psychic vision. I knew what Sarah meant when I saw Jerry backed against a corner. He had tried to fight the dread liches on his own, but he was about to die. Sozo, is that you? It seems I won't be able to see you get your body back. Jerry, I'm sorry. We got here as fast as we could. Don't worry about me. Dorian will surely pay for this. Make sure you and Sarah protect each other. We will. Rest well, Jerry. I was so enraged by Jerry's death that I destroyed the Dread Liches with my lightning strikes until there were none left in the area. From day 36 to day 39, I made a return trip back to the Twilight Valley. It hadn't changed much since the other time I was here, but there was a fisherman at the local pond who I hadn't seen before. Hello there, I'm Zozo. Well, hi there, Zozo. I'm fishing. No, oh, I'm just kidding. My name is Fred the Fisherman, and I could use a hand. Sure, Fred. What seems to be the problem? I know I'd be able to catch more fish if I had some twilight worms as bait, but they're all way up there in the higher parts of the valley. Can you go get a couple for me? You can count on me, Fred. I climbed up the terrain of the Twilight Valley, enjoying the view along the way. With all that happened recently, it was nice to gather my thoughts for a moment. The moment didn't last long, though, because I was attacked by a giant. Even though it was big, it had gotten the drop on me. I took a few swings with my iron sword to make it think twice. Then I warped back a short distance and hit it with a few lightning strikes. I closed the distance back into melee range and finished it off with my sword. Soon after, I returned to Fred the Fisherman with the bait he was looking for. Happy fishing. Hope you catch a big one. Thanks. I only came here to the valley because the fishing in the ocean ain't that good anymore. Ever since that drowned necromancer rose from the sea, People have been afraid that he might have left a curse on it. He is really evil, that Dorian. A curse on the place he was drowned. Sure sounds like him. From day 40 to day 43, I was looking at the base after coming home from my short journey and noticed that it had been redecorated to look even spookier, which for ghosts and spirits is incredibly cool. This place looks amazing. I predicted that you would like the changes, Zozo. Sarah, was this you? I do like it, but what was the occasion? I wanted to invite some of my Siren sisters to come live at the base. The new look is so they'll feel right at home. Is that all right with you? Of course. If the other Sirens are anything like you, then we'll all get along nicely. A while later, the other Sirens that Sarah had mentioned arrived at the base. It was right at the time she had predicted that they would arrive. Hello, everyone. Make yourself at home. Friends of Sarah are friends of mine. Thanks for being so understanding, Zozo. Living at this base together always works out when we compromise. Sure, the more the merrier. Soon after I greeted the sirens, the farmer who was also living at the base approached me so that we could talk. Well, hey there, Zozo. You're just the ghost I was looking to see. I have another job for you, if you're willing. Of course, I'm always willing to help a farmer in need. I heard from some other farmers that there was a mutant enderman running around and ruining everyone's crops. If you could take care of that mob, you'd be helping farmers everywhere. You can count on me. From day 44 to day 49, I took up the farmer on his request and traveled to the Taiga Mountain. That mutant enderman who was causing problems had to be around here somewhere. But it wasn't just mobs I had to worry about. Dorian was here on the mountain too, alongside a mutant zombie. Well, 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 if it isn't the hero Brine who defied me. How has the spirit been faring? You're probably close to fading away into nothingness by now. You wish, Dorian. My ghost form has only gotten more powerful, and I will use everything I have to get my body back. 
Easier said than done, Zozo. You really think getting your body back will be so simple? I was counting on your ghost to become a vengeful spirit. Wait, what do you mean? Do you think the restless dead can return so easily to the way they used to be? Why do you think I still carry the curse of undeath after the villagers drowned me? It's because there is no way back to life for us evil spirits. It can't be. Have I been getting stronger for nothing? Yes, embrace your rage and frustration. Become the monster Herobrine and forget about reclaiming your body. My undead will help you become what you are meant to be. Dorian the Drowned Necromancer disappeared into a fog, leaving behind the mutant zombie to battle me. From day 50 to day 53, I started my battle against the mutant zombie that had been sent against me. My lightning strikes were proving effective, but because of what Dorian the Drowned Necromancer had said, I was starting to get worried about using my ghost powers. I switched my sword and hacked away at the mutant zombie. I didn't use my warp or my lightning strike. It made the fight a lot harder, but I had to believe that I was more than just the monster hero Brian. I am going to get my body back, no matter what! The mutant zombie was defeated after a big struggle, and it dropped a spellbook once it was defeated. I took a moment to examine it, and I saw a flashback to Dorian's revival. He had just emerged from the ocean as a drowned necromancer, and was looking to get revenge on the people of the world for what they did to him, casting down lightning strikes in his wrath. He researched the legends of other powerful undead beings, and he eventually came across the story of Herobrine. It looked like he didn't just steal my body to make me into a ghost, he wanted to make me just like the dangerous and evil Herobrine from the stories. Maybe then, he'd finally have someone else as tortured and wicked as himself to hang out with. From day 54 to day 57, I resumed the farmer's quest to stop the mutant Enderman in the Taiga Mountain. I found the mob in the process of a rampage, and with some nervousness, I approached. Can I actually defeat this mutant Enderman without my ghost powers? The mutant Enderman sprinted at me and swiped at me with its powerful limbs. My hearts were getting low, and I was still weakened from the fight with the mutant zombie. <laughs> Is that all the great hero Brian can do against me? I thought you were more powerful. That's what the story said. Believe everything you hear. I may not be the same Herobrine that is feared by everyone, but I am Herobrine myself. When I said it out loud, it made sense. I could use my ghost powers because I was the one in control of them, and I was using them to help. Take this. Ow, lightning strikes hurt. I thought I could be the scariest, but now I'm done for. My ghost powers made short work of the mutant Enderman. He dropped an item upon his defeat, which turned out to be an antler headdress. Wow. With his headgear equipped, all of my attacks would gain greater knockback. What a neat upgrade. I returned to the farmer at the base and told him that I had defeated the mutant Enderman. It seems that I can always count on you, Zozo. As a reward for getting rid of that mutant Enderman, I'll tell you a secret about Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. What do you know about him? I was there when the villagers drowned him in the ocean. His last words were a curse to everyone. He said, soon you'll all feel the loneliness that I have felt. What did he mean? I don't know, but he probably had something real evil in mind when he said it. From day 58 to day 62, I managed to herd some more chickens into the base just to make sure we had a big enough food source for everyone. Then, I made my way deep into the underground cavern so I could do some mining for better materials. I used my iron pickaxe to dig until I struck diamonds and mined myself enough to create a diamond pickaxe. I equipped the new tool and kept mining diamonds until I had enough to craft a diamond sword, leggings, a chest plate, and boots. This new weapon and armor would serve me well in battle against the undead forces of Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. With my first pieces of diamond armor and gear in tow, I returned to the base, and there were now floating lanterns of ghost lights around the base. I even found that a new room had been added. Sarah had been hard at work making our haunted house into a haunted home. This is just my way of saying thanks, Zozo. You've really been a friend to everyone after we lost Jerry the Geomancer. I feel like I could stay here for a very long time. Thanks, Sarah. That means a lot, too, because for ghosts like us, a really long time might mean eternity. From day 63 to day 66, I was down in the underground cavern making some expansions to the mine when Victor the Vindicator Chef came to see me. 
Hey Zozo, I heard that you were still looking for your original body. There's a biome nearby where you may not have looked yet. Oh really? Well I'm glad you thought to tell me about it, Victor. I went back above ground and traveled to the place that Victor had told me about, the Wooded Badlands. I looked around for any signs of necromancy magic or a gravestone, anything that might lead me to my body. That's when I noticed a scary gorgon sneaking up on me. Boo! Hey, don't say boo to me. I'm a ghost. That's our thing. Sorry, sorry. I thought it would be fun to startle you. I didn't mean any offense. It seemed like she meant it. That was a relief, because I thought I would have to fight this gorgon. You're a lot nicer than you look. I could say the same thing about you. You're the hero brine, aren't you? Sorta. I'm the new hero brine. My name is Zozo. Zozo, huh? Hey, Morgan. You could still help me with a hero brine quest, right? I think so. What did you have in mind? Aha, you agreed. This way, a new ghost friend. From day 67 to day 70, I followed Morgan the Gorgon through the wooded badlands to find out more about this hero brine quest she had mentioned. So, aren't you curious about this hero brine quest of ours? Yes, actually. I was waiting for you to tell me more. Well, according to the scary stories about Herobrine, he is supposed to be the most powerful undead because of his ability to rebuild and destroy. Rebuild and destroy? Yes, Herobrine can destroy and rebuild the world however he wants. And anyone who is able to control him would be able to gain the same power. I don't have that kind of power. Not yet. That's why we're on this quest. You need to regain your power by facing down another being that Herobrine fought. That's why we're headed to the lair of the Dread Beast. We soon arrived at a part of the wooded badlands where the dangerous mob, known as the Dread Beast, was known to have her lair. Come on out, Dread Beast. I am Zozo the Herobrine, and I challenge you. The Dread Beast soon emerged and roared with anger. You think you're Herobrine? Please, I battled the real Herobrine in the past. You'll never be as powerful a ghost as him. We'll see. The Dread Beast charged in, but I knocked her back with a couple slices from my diamond sword, combined with the increased knockback from the antler headdress. She tried to resist and charge at me, but I warped out of the way and brought down lightning strikes until she was defeated. From day 71 to day 74, I thanked Morgan the Gorgon for helping me learn more about the hero brine from the stories and left her to travel further across the wooded badlands in search of my body. I was starting to get the hang of this new spooky hero brand story, and I was also starting to think it was going to end up being a pretty good one. But it's not the only story that you can find on this channel, so you should look for my other videos by typing ZO ZO into the search bar. I arrived at a rundown structure in the middle of the wooded badlands. I thought it maybe had something to do with how my old body might have lived. Yeah, I can feel it. I was definitely here before I was a ghost. But that's what you are now, so why try to go back? Dorian, it's you. Still chasing after the past, Zozo? You will become my hero, Brian, and I will use your powers to rebuild a world where everyone is as lonely as I've been. That's a terrible thing to do, and I won't let you get away with it. I tried to lightning strike him, but he was immune to the damage. When I swung my diamond sword, he struck back with his own weapon, doing far more damage than I could do to him. Fool, you actually thought I wasn't prepared to fight you. You'll get a bit stronger, but your ghost form will still fade away. Before then, I do hope you help me achieve my lonely world. What else do you have to continue on for? Dorian the Drowned Necromancer spared my ghostly life, probably because I was still important to his plans. One thing's for sure, I need to get stronger than he ever imagined I could be. From day 75 to day 78, I kept thinking about how I should face Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. He had been a restless spirit for a lot longer than me, and maybe I'd have to become just as evil as him to have a fighting chance. But I don't want to be evil. I don't want to be that kind of hero, Brian. Seeing that I was down, Sarah the Psychic Siren came to my room to cheer me up. Zozo, I foresaw that you would be sad, so I made sure to give the basin an almost invisible enchanted mist so it'd be hidden from attacks. That way, nobody will disturb us without us expecting it. That's really good, Sarah. Thank you. Let me tell you, Zozo, in my professional opinion as a psychic, I don't predict that you'll turn evil. I hope I can live up to your predictions. I went outside for a bit to get some air, and shortly after, Victor the Vindicator Chef joined me with a fresh new magic cake that he had just baked. Give this a try, Zozo. I think it might just pick you up. Thanks, Victor. 
I gobbled up the cake and felt a transformation coming on. I doubled in size and my heart gauge increased to contain 80 hearts. Victor sure knows how to cook. From day 79 to day 84, I went back to the wooded badlands to see if I could face Dorian the Drowned Necromancer again. I knew this whole thing would be over if I could just shut him down. Dorian wasn't here himself, but it seemed like he might have used some of his necromancy to mobilize a few random skeletons to fight me. With my lightning strikes, I was easily able to blow away these weak undead. I wasn't satisfied with the amount of searching I'd done here, so I examined the structure more closely. That's when I noticed doors that led to a dwelling where a pink pixie was staying. Hello there, I'm Zozo. Do you know anything about who used to live here? Yeah, I do. There was a village here that was destroyed by storms, a blizzard, and a thunderstorm. There was only one surviving villager, and he was really alone. Was that villager Herobrine? Yeah, this is the place where Herobrine's story began. The land has been cursed, and plants have never grown as well here since. It's just like that curse that Dorian put on the ocean. I've got to put the hero in Herobrine and find a way to lift both of those curses. This may help you in your journey, Zozo. Pixie gave me a netherite helmet, an extremely durable piece of armor that would certainly give me a fighting chance the next time I saw Dorian. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to my base, excited to show my friends the awesome netherite helmet I'd been given. Instead, I found a bunch of dreadliches invading my base, trying to find and attack those same friends. Oh, I can't let this slide. I don't want to overuse my ghost powers, but for the sake of my friends, it's a risk worth taking. I started firing lightning blasts left and right, destroying them quickly and dropping their morale. The rest saw my skills and took off running, but I wasn't going to let an attack on my own base slide. I came running after them. But while chasing them, I ran into a troll who seemed to be crying. As much as I wanted revenge, I didn't want to leave a clearly distressed guy on the hook like that. So I asked him what was wrong. I've been working on my novel, but I can't seem to get through it. I'm losing confidence in myself. You can do it, Mr. Troll. Just believe in yourself and try to get past the first draft. I'll be excited to read it when it's done. Thank you, kind stranger. I'll never forget this. From day 90 to day 94, I followed the surviving dreadliches into the snowy plains. It was freezing. I remembered what I had read about Dorian before. He needs to be cold. He must be hiding somewhere out here. I'm on his territory now. But I couldn't afford to worry about that just yet. I needed to track down and defeat those liches. Eventually, I caught up to them. They must have gotten exhausted and stopped. I finally had my chance. You guys are gonna pay for attacking my base. Oh, Zozo, you're so naive. Dorian knew everything. He predicted exactly what you'd do. And now you're going to get destroyed. You've never been able to destroy me before. What makes you guys think you're gonna be able to do it now? Oh, it won't be us, Zozo. It'll be him. A huge, terrifying Dread Knight stepped out and the Dread Liches all ran off. He must have been one of Dorian's most dangerous henchmen yet. Even as a ghost, I think I'm gonna ache after this one. From day 95 to day 97, I went head to head with the Dread Knight. And he was as fast and as powerful as I'd feared. And as the battle went on, I was worried I might be doomed until I got a second wind and fought back with all of my might. Soon enough, I defeated even the terrible Dread Knight, the deadliest of Dorian the Drowned Necromancer's henchmen. I'm stronger than I've ever been, but does this mean I'm doomed to become evil and end up serving that monster? But my worried thoughts were interrupted by a new discovery. When the Dread Knight was defeated, he dropped a notebook containing instructions direct from the enemy. Destroy Zozo. He is unworthy of the title of Herobrine. Return to the Ice Cave when you are done. If you need anything extra to finish the job, check the chest behind the broken boulder. So now I knew that Dorian was hiding in some kind of ice cave, and that note about the chest really intrigued me. I searched the snowy plain until I found a boulder that looked half shattered, and then I found a chest behind it. And inside the chest was a battle axe! This belongs to Dorian, and I can't wait to give it back to him. On day 98, I returned to my base to tell everyone who'd helped me how all of this was going to unfold. For all I knew, it might be my final chance to speak with them. Guys, I wanted to thank all of you for how much you've helped me. 
I never could have gotten this far without you. This final part is so dangerous that I have to do it alone. Dorian is more powerful than ever, but I'd rather be destroyed than let him use me as an evil tool. There's no way he'd destroy you, Zozo. You're too powerful and too good-hearted. And in the end, the good guys always win and the bad guys always lose. Here, here. After you defeat him, Zozo, I'll bake a mighty cake that we can all enjoy. Ah, and I'll farm all the best quality ingredients. You got this, Zozo. I have full confidence in you. You're all the best. I'm gonna defeat him for you. All of you. And I'm going to get my body back. On day 99, I ventured back to the snowy plains with everything I needed to finally take on the big, bad beast of a necromancer who stole my body. It's time for me to show you the door, Dorian. Didn't actually take me that long to find the ice cave that was Dorian's hideout because I spotted a large guard force of dread liches waiting outside, keeping a lookout. Talk about an undead giveaway. There were so many of them, and they looked better armed and armored than usual. Dorian must have known I was coming and put them here to slow me down before the final battle. It's an ingenious plan. What can I do? I think I may be of service. I turned and saw that Morgan the Gorgon was behind me. Morgan, what are you doing here? Sorry for following you. I was going to yell boo again, but it didn't seem like the right moment. I feel like I've been missing out on all the action. Let me distract these undead creeps and you can go in there and take down the big bad guy. Sounds like a great plan, Morgan. Let's do this. On day 100, while Morgan was distracting the dread liches outside, I entered the ice cave and found Dorian the drowned necromancer waiting for me. You made it through my servants. How? It's because I don't have servants. I have friends. Oh, spare me all that self-righteous foolishness. You can't talk your way out of serving me. I brought you back. I bound you. You belong to me, Zozo, and nothing will change that. I'm going to keep fighting, no matter what, for myself and my friends. And when I'm done, all you're going to be is a bad memory. Then let's see. Time to go back to the void, silly little ghost. I unleashed everything I had onto Dorian, not giving up, even as he fought back against me. I could tell as the battle went on, he was getting weaker and weaker. I pulled out the battle axe, the battle axe that Dorian had left for his Dread Knight to destroy me. I'm sure the void will welcome you, Dorian. And with one more strike, Dorian was no more. There was a tremendous flash, and in the moment that Dorian was destroyed, my body was returned to me. Wow, it feels amazing to be back. On day one, I spawned in as the Grim Reaper. Then I noticed I was tiny, and I only had three hearts. What is this nonsense? I looked around and saw that I was in front of a castle. Ooh, this looks interesting. I'll take a look inside. I opened the door and called out. Anybody home? Maybe one of my friends lived here or something. I started wandering around and found myself in a throne room. What is that? I saw a man with a mutant wither skeleton. He was holding a scythe. Wait, I think that's my scythe. How did you get it? The man screamed in rage and pointed at me. Destroy him. A bunch of zombies came out from the back room and I gasped in shock. Without even thinking, I fired an icy blast that froze some of the zombies solid. Huh, that's interesting. I guess this is because I'm as cold as death. I ran out the door and down the stairs as the zombies followed me. That was not what I was expecting. And why does that guy have an army of zombies? That's not right. I found a small cave and decided to sleep there for the night. Tomorrow, I'll find out what's going on. On day two, I left the cave to go exploring. I walked for half a day until I found my way to the Atom Forest. I don't really have a home, so I guess I'm gonna have to make one. I started collecting some wood to make a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. After some additional mining and crafting, I had some simple stone tools and weapons. Well, it's better than nothing. I had been working so hard all day, so when I stopped, I realized I was hungry. What does a Grim Reaper eat? I found some cows and pigs and cooked up some food for myself. It didn't do anything to help. In fact, it made me feel sick. Gross, I need to find something else. I noticed that it had gotten dark. Suddenly, a group of zombies popped out and started attacking me. With my new stone sword, I was able to take them out easily. They had dropped some meat and I stared at it hungrily. Maybe this will help me? 
I ate the meat, and sure enough, my hearts were restored. I feel much better now. I made it back to my base and worked on a few more things before heading to bed. On day three, I went back out to find more materials for the base. It was safe enough, but I wanted to make some improvements. It turned out to be a nice day. I hope nothing too crazy happens today. I realized I had spoken too soon, because just then, I heard an awful crash. I ran to see what the noise was when I saw a Dread Queen fighting a bunch of zombies. Hey, leave her be! I rushed forward with my weapons. The zombies started to attack me when I remembered my trick at the castle. I fired out some ice blasts and froze up some of those nasty zombies. The others noticed and started to run away. Nice job, Death. It's been a minute since I've seen you. Did you shrink? Who are you? I'm Famine. Do you know me? Uh, I'm sorry, no. Oh, this must have been Lord Terror's doing. I knew he was up to no good. I was so confused at this point. Famine could see that I was overwhelmed. You are the Grim Reaper, or Death. I'm Famine, and we have two friends, War and Pestilence. We establish order in the world. But Lord Terror, as he calls himself, started messing with stuff. He's been infiltrating the villages and turning people into undead. That's horrible. Those souls need to be freed and move on. I thought that's what you were planning, but nobody has seen you for a while. Now I know something bad happened. You're smaller and you don't look like yourself. This is a lot to take in. How about we get back to my base? It's not a castle, but it's safer than out here. Sure. Famine and I made our way back to my base, just in time for the sun to set. On days four to five, I helped Famine make a little home at my base. I was driven out of my home by the undead. I guess Lord Terror is getting more powerful as the days go on. The house wasn't too fancy, but Famine seemed to like it, and she thanked me. No problem, anything for a friend. I went out to look for some more supplies when I saw a group of skeletons near a cave entrance. I'm death, surely they won't want to harm me. As I approached, they seemed friendly, but then they started shooting me with their bows. Hey, we aren't enemies. Honestly, I didn't know anymore. I was just a baby after all. I used my sword to attack, and soon enough, they were all gone. Hey, what's that? I noticed a bow on the ground, and I picked it up. It had an enchantment of flame on it. Nice, this will come in handy. On day six to eight, while well out in the forest near my base, I gathered some meat from some more cows and pigs. Famine got hungry a lot after all. I'm gonna keep working and getting stronger. Lord Terror doesn't stand a chance against me. Is that so? I looked, and to my surprise, it was Lord Terror. He had a few zombies around him. Let those innocent souls go. You don't have a right to keep them here. Lord Terror laughed and swung the scythe around. I'm the Lord of Death now, little reaper. I won your scythe fair and square. What are you talking about? He seemed tired of talking, so he swung at me instead. Whoa! He was fast. I tried to dodge him, but he kept getting hits in. I beat you once. I will beat you again. I gotta get out of here. I ran as fast as my little legs could carry me. As I did, I heard Lord Terror laughing from behind me. That's right, little reaper. Run away. I will see you soon enough. On days 9 to 10, I made it back to the base. Famine could tell I was hurt, and she tried her hardest to help me. It's okay, Death. You will grow stronger and eventually beat Lord Terror. He's just a silly little monster trying to steal other people's things. I felt a little bit better after our talk, but I still felt exhausted. Oh, I almost forgot. I have a surprise for you. She brought me outside to show me a statue she was beginning to make. Ta-da! It's great, Famine! Is it a tent? No, silly. Do you really not know what it is? I looked again. Can you tell what it is? I also made some other upgrades while you were gone. She showed me the lanterns and a small archery range. Wow, you've really outdone yourself. It's the least I can do for a friend. Famine was awesome. I was glad I was able to find her. I hoped our other friends were doing okay. I would go looking for them soon. On days 11 to 12, I had a vivid dream. I was a fully grown Grim Reaper with my scythe at my side. I was living in the castle that I had escaped from on day one. Everything is as it should be. Not quite. I looked and saw Lord Terror, except he looked like a normal villager. I believe we have a game that needs playing, Death. 
With his dark powers, Lord Terror began to steal away my energy and my ability. He shapeshifted into his mutant wither skeleton self as I became a sad little baby reaper. Ah! I woke up in horror at the nightmare I had just had. I rushed to Famine to tell her about it. She shook her head. So that's what happened. I knew you made a deal with a dying human, but I didn't know you lost all your power in the process. That can't be it. Why am I back, but as a baby? Why can he control the dead? Famine shook her head. Maybe our friends know. I think it's about time we go find them. On days 13 to 15, I went out to explore. I was hoping to find war or pestilence, but they didn't seem to be anywhere. I hoped they weren't captured or anything. I realized I was back in the area where I had seen famine for the first time. There were a bunch of zombies milling around still. I guess they just expected her to come back. Get lost! I drew my bow and defeated them one by one. I didn't realize it until now, but I was releasing their souls from their bodies. I was freeing them. Nice! I managed to release all their souls when I felt a power coursing through me. I grew in size and became an older Grim Reaper. I'm bigger and I have 30 hearts. I realized I could also now turn invisible for short periods. That'll come in handy. I can't wait to try this out later. On day 16 to 19, I found a cave and decided to mine for some more materials. This looks promising. Hopefully I can find some iron in here. As I was venturing deeper into the cave, I saw a group of skeletons standing right on top of an iron deposit. It looks like I'm gonna have to take care of that. I drew my bow. They noticed me immediately and began shooting. Come on guys, I just need some iron. After just a few more shots, they were all gone. Their bows and arrows scattered around me. I mined the iron without any more trouble and got to work. I smelted the iron into ingots with a furnace, then was able to make a new sword, pickaxe, and some other tools. Yes, things are looking up. On days 20 to 22, I started to head back to my base when I noticed I was being followed. I went invisible briefly and waited for them to approach. Then as the figure approached, I turned visible again and jumped out. Whoa, 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 I'm a friend. He was a crimson wizard and the red of his outfit made me think of anger, which then made me think, are you war? In the flesh. Yeah, I thought you looked kind of different. You're uh, not as tall as you used to be. I told him what happened and he whistled. That sounds awful. Hopefully you can get your scythe and your castle back. Those are pretty sick. Thanks? No problem. I invited him back to my base and he happily agreed. I thought my house was a fortress, you know, being war and all. But those pesky undead got inside and started breaking everything. So I left. Good thing I ran into you. We were nearly to the base when we saw Famine running toward us. Oh, hey, Famine! She didn't even acknowledge war. Death! No terror is outside! He is threatening to take down the base! Wait, war? Sheesh, it's like I'm invisible. Stay here. I'll go see what he wants. If I need help, I'll call for you. War and Famine got to catching up while I approached the entrance. Sure enough, Lord Terror was there with my scythe. I believe that scythe belongs to me. See now, little reaper. I won this fair and square. You agreed to the terms. I don't even remember what happened. And you're just a human. You can't be death. That's my calling. You're wrong. The witch gave me the ability to win this power. Witch? Lord Terror screamed and charged at me. I dodged him and used my Ice Blast ability to try to stop him. It didn't work for some reason. What in the world? He laughed and lunged at me again. I slashed him with my new iron sword. I actually managed to hit him and he looked at me in shock. I was about to hit him again when he slammed a scythe into the ground, pushing me back. I'll be back to finish you off. And with that, Lord Terror ran away. What a coward. I'll say. I looked and saw Warren Famine looking out from behind the trees. I did manage to wound him though, so that means I'm getting stronger. Yeah, but you have a lot of work to do. On days 23 to 26, I chatted with War about Lord Terror. You definitely need some upgrades if you're gonna fight Lord Terror and beat him. I can think of a few things that might be useful to you. Like what? Well, you definitely need to upgrade your sword. Iron is all right, but you need some diamonds and an enchanting table to improve your attack. Okay, where should I go? War told me all the places where I would find the supplies. It wasn't a short list. This might take a while. You want to defeat Lord Terror and get your scythe back, right? Of course I do. Then get to it. 
I started gathering materials for the enchanting table and managed to make one all by myself. Good job, Death. Thanks. If you think I'm doing a good job, be sure to join me on all my other adventures. Just search Z-O, Z-O. On days 27 to 31, I went to check on Famine. I hadn't seen her while I was gathering supplies, and I wanted to make sure she was okay. Hey, Famine, how are you liking your house? It's great. Look what I've been working on. She led me to the statue, which I could definitely tell was an hourglass. Wow. You've made some great progress. Yeah, well, I'm not quite there yet. I wanted to add something special on top. It's a surprise. Could you get some white and black wool for me? Sure. I made my way outside to find some sheep to bring back to the base. I found an abandoned village and spotted some sheep in pens. Perfect. As I went to collect them, I heard something approaching. A horde of zombies were coming toward me. They must have been the villagers that used to live here. You guys need a rest, and I'm so sorry Lord Terror is doing this to you. I used my weapons to release the souls from the undead. I was much more powerful and helped them all in just a few moments. Hopefully, you can all be at peace now. I gathered the sheep and managed to bring them all back to the base. It wasn't easy, but I knew that Famine would appreciate it. On days 32 to 35, I went to gather some more food for all of us. Pork seemed like a pretty safe bet. I know the pigs will be easy to find, but I need to wait until dark for the zombies. I decided to set up a little trap for them, and sure enough, they fell right into it. Impressive, Death. Who is that? You don't recognize my voice? Shame on you, old friend. Then I saw someone step out from behind the mushrooms. Of course I didn't notice her. She was a mushroom lord. She blended in. Pestilence. Did you shrink? Yeah, I shrunk. I told Pestilence what had happened, and she tissed in disapproval. Now, why would you do that, Death? You are too clever to be outsmarted and depowered by some lowly wither skeleton. That's the thing. I think Lord Terror cheated me. He mentioned something about a witch. I think that he somehow won because of her. Well, the only witch I know of is Famine. Hey. I'm just kidding. I've heard of an apothecary that lives here in the swamp. Maybe that's who he went to. This is great information. Pestilence agreed to take the food back to the base while I looked for the witch. Hopefully, she could give me more information about Lord Terror. On days 36 to 39, I journeyed further into the fungal patch in search of the witch. I thought for sure that I would find her, but I didn't see a house anywhere. Where in the world is she? I looked around some more when I saw a group of rabbits. They were acting kind of strange, a little too organized. Maybe they're her henchmen or something. I should follow them. Hmm. Actually, they're probably just stocking up on food. How silly of me to think that they were working for the witch. Then, I noticed that the rabbits all gathered together again. They seemed to be examining each other's food. Okay, I should maybe look somewhere else. Then the rabbits all bounded toward a large mushroom and disappeared. Whoa, where did they go? I quickly followed after them, running straight toward the mushroom. On days 40 to 43, I ran through the fungal patch chasing the rabbits. What in the world? Intruder! A large group of rabbits came bounding toward me. What are you doing in Our Lady's realm? Did you have an inquiry? Is this where the witch lives? The rabbits gasped. You dare call her such a rude name. She is an apothecary of great renown. Sorry, I, I just need answers. I don't mean her any harm. You look like you do. Then the rabbits started jumping at me. Hey! I didn't want to hurt them, so I just tried to swat them away as nicely as I could. Death, what are you doing here? I looked up to see a friendly witch. Friends, no need to harass Death. I I'm sure he has a reason for being here. The rabbit stopped attacking me and quickly surrounded the woman. Who are you? I'm Amelia. I wasn't expecting you for quite some time. I I'm not here to collect your soul. I just need to know why you helped Lord Terror. Lord Terror? He stole my power and made me regenerate. He took my scythe and is using it to keep souls captive in their undead bodies. Amelia gasped and started to shake her head. <gasps> that was Logan Turner. I gave him a potion of luck. He said he needed it in order to fulfill his last dream before he passed. I had no idea he would use it for such an awful thing. She seemed genuinely upset. I can't undo what's been done, but maybe this can help you. She went inside her house and came out with a potion. What is this? A potion of strength. You will need that in order to get your scythe back. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you again, but hopefully not for a long time.
She waved goodbye as I left her realm, returning to the swamp. On days 44 to 49, I returned to my base. Pestilence, famine, and war were having a good time together. I noticed they had improved their homes as well as the wall of the base. You've been busy. So have you, my friend. Did you find the witch? Apothecary, and yes, she was very nice. I told them the whole story and showed them the potion. That'll be useful later. I'm glad you were able to find her. Probably gave her quite a scare, though. Just a little bit. We all laughed and chatted for a little bit before Famine jumped up. Oh, come look at the statue. I went to look and sure enough, Famine had outdone herself. On top of the hourglass was a skull that looked just like my face. Whoa, it's amazing. You've been a great friend to us, Death. It's the least we can do. We admired the statue together for a little while longer and then went to bed. On days 50 to 53, I woke up to a loud crash. I hurried outside to see what it was, and there were zombies everywhere. I could see Lord Terror standing on the edge of the wall. Come and fight me yourself, Logan. Don't call me that. He snarled at me and then swung the scythe. It nearly knocked me over, but it also knocked out some of the undead. Time to be freed, my friends. I used my iron sword on the group of undead, freeing them from their cursed bodies. It took a little while, but I eventually got them all. You can all be at peace now. Just then, I felt a pain in my back. I grew taller and gained more hearts. I looked in my back to see what the pain was and realized that I had grown dark feathery wings. Whoa, this is amazing. I flew up for a minute to survey the damage. This is gonna take some time to fix. Death. I looked and saw famine and pestilence running toward me. I lowered myself to the ground. What's wrong? Lord Terra took war. The undead were just a distraction. No! I slumped to the ground. I thought I could protect everyone, but Lord Terror was too clever. He needed to pay. On days 54 to 57, we all worked hard to fix the base. We gathered supplies, made the walls taller, and added extra security measures, including a small moat. After working all day, we sat down to chat about our next move. There's no doubt that Lord Terra took war to the castle. Why do you say that? Oh yeah, you don't remember. There's a massive dungeon in the basement. It has cages, traps, and all sorts of things. We actually used it to meet there sometimes for brunch. Sounds lovely. It was. We should do it again soon. Yeah, cleared her throat. <clears throat> Sorry, but he'll be there for sure. There is a back entrance where we would come in, quicker that way. Pestilence gave me directions, and I wrote them down. I needed to find our friend before Lord Terror did something awful. But first, I needed to prepare. On days 58 to 62, I went mining for more diamonds. I needed to make some better armor and weapons for myself, since I had no idea what I might face at the castle. I wasn't having any luck, and was about to go search another cave, when I saw a glimmer just up ahead. Diamonds! I walked forward, then felt something fall on me from above. It was a huge hairy spider, and he had brought some friends. I'm a friend, no need to hurt me. The spiders kept attacking, and I had no choice but to defend myself. Soon enough, they were all gone. Now, on to the diamonds. The deposit was actually really large, and I managed to make armor, plus a new sword and a pickaxe. Sweet! I felt just a little bit more ready to go save war. On day 63 to 66, I noticed that part of the statue had been damaged during the fight. I didn't want to finish it without war, so I just admired it with all its burns and marks. I'll save you, war. I promise. Hello, Mr. Death, sir. I looked and saw some of Amelia's rabbit friends gathering around me. You aren't going to jump on me again, are you? No, sir, we need your help. Amelia has been captured by that Lord Terror Man. We don't have the strength to get her back. Did you get her back? The rabbits looked very concerned. Of course, he has my friend too. He's probably keeping them in the same place. Oh, thank you, Mr. Death, sir. I'll be back soon. In the meantime, you can wait here with my friends. They can help you. They agreed to stay while I rescued Amelia. This was going to be a little bit more difficult, but I was determined. And hey, if you like what you've seen so far, don't forget to subscribe. We love having you here with us. On days 67 to 70, I followed the directions to the back door entrance of the dungeon. It was hiding behind some trees and bushes. Good job me for thinking ahead. I entered quietly and made my way down, down, down. I didn't hear much for a while, so I thought I was in the clear. What was that? I turned a corner and saw a swarm of zombies blocking the hallway. 
They saw me and started ambling toward me. Get back! I used my wings to fly over them. I fired my ice blast at them from the air, freezing them solid. Peace, friends. I lowered myself in front of a door and opened it carefully. Death! It's about time you showed up. War and Amelia were stuck in cages, and I quickly broke the bars to free them. How did you know I was here? Your loyal little friends told me. They really are the best, aren't they? Sure are. Let's get out of here. On day 71 to 74, we made our way back up toward the back door. Then I noticed a lever I hadn't seen before. It was hiding behind a pillar. I wonder what this opens. Is that a wise idea? It was my house. I'm sure it'll be fine. I released the lever and the trap door opened. I went inside and saw a chest in a small room. <gasps> There's a chest. Well, what are you waiting for? Open it. I opened it and inside were netherite ingots, gold, diamonds, and some other ingredients for enchanting. Wow. I climbed back up and showed war. Hey, you can finally make that sword we've been talking about. Right. We continued out following the stream of daylight. On days 75 to 78, we finally made it out. Thank goodness. I was beginning to think that Lord Terror would hold us there forever. Not so fast. Lord Terror came around the corner, scythe in hand. You dare take my witch and my strongest soldier? I am not a witch. Then I would never fight for you. We brandished our weapons as Lord Terror snarled. Why won't you just die? He swung the scythe, but I managed to dodge. I then swung my sword and hit Lord Terror. He stepped back, then swung again. He was fast, but I was an equal opponent now. I could sense his fear. No, 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 no! He slammed the hilt of the scythe into the ground and blasted us back. Somehow, through some dark magic, he stole my potion of strength and drank it. On day 79 to 84, we all watched in horror as Lord Terror grew and grew and grew. He was enormous. Oh no, we need to go. Lord Terror laughed as I picked up my friends and flew away with them. This has to end soon or Lord Terror is going to take over everything. On days 85 to 89, we arrived safely back at my base. Famine and Pestilence came running out to greet us. Okay, you better not cry, because I'm not good at dealing with emotion. Amelia saw her rabbits, and they all jumped for joy. It seemed like things were at least a little normal for now. Death, come, we need to fix that sword of yours. War took me to upgrade my sword and then showed me how to enchant it. Wow, this will really help, War. Thanks for everything you've done. Hey, I love conflict, but not when it involves my friends. It's the fire aspect enchantment. It'll give your sword a burning edge. This will help you to get your scythe back. How? Lord Terror doesn't always have the scythe with him. He likes to hang it up in the main corridor and just admire it. I heard him talking about it while we were captured. This is great information, War. If you can fight him off long enough to get the scythe back, that'll be the key to stopping Lord Terror for good. I agreed and went to show my friends. They oohed and awed before Famine spoke up. Come and see what Pestilence and I did with the help of the rabbits. They took me over to the statue, which now had wildflowers growing all around the base. On top was the skull, now with flowers and a touch of flames. Guys, this looks awesome. You are the Lord of Death, but we know you have a soft side. I do like flowers. I stared at it in awe. I really did have amazing friends. On days 90 to 94, I traveled back to the castle to retrieve my scythe. If I did it while Lord Terror was unaware, surely I would be able to defeat him. As I approached the castle, I decided to just hide next to one of the pillars inside the throne room and stake it out. I could see Lord Terror back to his normal size. Thank goodness, he was standing around, admiring the scythe. That's mine. I waited for a long time before he fell asleep. I quietly opened the door and snuck past him, grabbing the scythe from the wall. I expected to grow into my full form, but something was wrong. Intruder! Lord Terror started to charge at me. I brandished my new sword and smacked him backwards. He brought out another potion and drank it before charging at me. He was incredibly fast and I could barely see him as he struck me. Oh no! My hearts were fading fast since I couldn't defend myself. I ran away, taking the scythe with me. It won't work for you, little reaper. You are too late. I didn't know what he meant, but I flew away before he had a chance to attack me again. I need to fix whatever he did to my scythe. 
Otherwise, I'm dead meat! On days 95 to 97, I brought my scythe back to the base and had War examine it! I don't know what to tell you. It looks normal to me. Maybe Amelia will know. I took it to her and she examined it. This is my fault. Lord Terror forced me to make a binding spell. He is now bound to the scythe by an enchantment. How do I break it? I'll have to make a counterspell, but it will probably take a few days. We might even break it. Do it. She worked tirelessly trying to fix the scythe, and I did what I could to assist her. I really need this to work. On day 98, I helped Amelia with what I could, but she said I needed to wait for the result. I made my way outside and admired our base and the statue. It had been a difficult journey so far, but I was glad that I had found my friends, made some new ones, and grown stronger. Even if my scythe didn't work, I knew that I would defeat Lord Terror somehow. Hey, we're really glad that you've been here on this journey too. Be sure to subscribe and search for ZOZO for more videos. Also, comment below on what my next adventure should be. I can't wait to see what you say. On day 99, I went to look for Amelia. She looked a little discouraged. I don't know if the spell worked. You'll need to wield it in battle to see. Well, then I guess it's time to go fight Lord Terror. I'm sorry about all the trouble I've caused. If it wasn't for me, none of this would have happened. Maybe, but I'm glad it did. I got to find my old friends again, build an awesome base, and meet you. You're an awesome apothecary, Amelia. Which? But who's keeping track? Go give him, well, you know. I smiled as I flew off towards the castle, scythe in hand. As I landed on the steps, the door was open for me. The undead were nowhere to be seen, but Lord Terror stood on the steps, sword in hand, potion in the other. You can't defeat me. We'll see about that. I took my scythe and slammed the hilt into the ground, causing everything to shake. I felt a surge of power, and I was connected to my weapon again. I grew taller, my hearts increased, and my wings spanned further. You have cheated death, Logan Turner, and for that, you must pay. Lord Terror drank a potion, and he grew taller. As our weapons met, there was a brilliant burst of light. It's not fair. I am Lord Terror, the new Grim Reaper. I earned that title. I lifted myself into the air, letting the scythe swing down with a mighty force. You stole that title. I am the rightful Grim Reaper, and now you must move on. Lord Terror screamed before the scythe made contact, and in a burst of smoke, he was gone. On day 100, I flew back to the base triumphant and glorious in my final form. Everyone cheered as I descended, and they even tried to hug me. You're our hero. The world is finally right again. And that was the honest truth.